it was did. down last night, but it's now yeah. working, yes. <laughs> and John is drunk and forgot to come. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden I got an ad on my Twitch. Supposedly we're live on YouTube. It says we're live on YouTube. Maybe. Maybe. Hey, we're live on YouTube. And I'm live on Twitch. Woo, we we're live! We're back, back live. Humble. Hooray! Can you hear me? Can, I hope can, so. Can you hear me? Uh, sound so, check, sound check. So, so this one's a little weird. Uh, I, I did a moronic thing last night, and I rebuilt my entire streaming PC rig, <laughs> uh, which you'll see that video on Friday, and it, it's a really beautiful system now. Um, it just was driving me so nuts before because uh, that was probably the most neglected PC in my collection. It could be why you always had those sound delays. It could, it could be. <laughs> well, I use pretty much the same hardware. Um, I, I'm using the same capture card. I, I did swap the motherboard on it. It's a mm -hmm. new motherboard, um, and I've got NVMe storage instead of just a SATA SSD now. Oh, nice. Um, so I, I did a, a couple upgrades to it, and I also put a, uh, a brand new cooler on there. Uh, which should help dramatically as well. Yeah, I saw the cooler. It's a real nice looking cooler. Yeah, so sounds good. Looks good. Woo! We're All right. we're live. We so I zero problems. So, so far. I had to completely rebuild my XSplit scenes. You'll you'll notice a couple different things that are that are in this. I did a new logo, uh, just because. Uh, but yeah, so it should be uh, interesting. But I'm glad we're up. Yeah. <laughs> because I was kind of worried going in because you can't exactly test this. Welcome, everyone, to uh, episode 54, Talking Heads. I'm Jeff. I'm Steve. Welcome to the show. Uh, Steve, you got a new gin today. I did. Actually, my wife went and picked this up for me because she knows I'm a, I'm a big fan of gin. Uh-huh. And uh, this is actually a locally distilled nice. uh, gin. So this is like two towns over. Maybe? Yeah. 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 So it's called Gallon House Gin. Over um, in Silverton, Oregon. Silverton, Oregon. Yeah. Right I had, I had a little bit today. Very good, actually. It's pretty tasty. Nice. Strong, too. It's it's uh, 88 proof, so it's yeah. a little, little higher than normal. Yeah, a little bit of a... And, and I, I haven't tried it yet, but I smelled it. And it's it's a, it, it's a got a little bit of a kick to the nose to it. Oh, it does. So yeah. uh, Anyway, we're going to make some gimlets. Uh, and we're going to make them the way Steve likes them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just sweet lime juice and jam. That's right. So we'll get our shaker going there. Yeah. Steve, if you want to get some uh, crushed ice in the glasses there. Sure. Let's go. Put my filthy hands all over this bag. That's right. Over that oh, yeah. perfectly clean ice bag. Yes. <laughs> this is actually a, uh, Jeff pointed this out. It's a Corsair. <laughs> Don't be showing that off. Ice bag. <laughs> Don't be showing that off. <laughs> cools your, cools your yeah. ice. Gosh. That's, that's kinda... Corsair, thank you for the ice crushing yeah, bag. Yeah. That one's not quite crushed. And I'm going to teach Steve how to properly use this... Uh, See, I've, I've used those before. I just like using a straight-up fork. Yeah. I tend to get better efficiency out of but, it. I mean, look at that. That's not bad. So, yeah, I, I don't know what your problem is because I use I don't these all know. the time. So, down we go. There we go. Got some fresh lime going in there. Uh, so, I'm making a double, double uh, portion of this just so we can pour both at once. But uh, basically, half of the fresh lime, uh, two ounces of gin. So, I'm going to add four ounces of gin into our glass mm -hmm. here. Grab my jigger. I did grab my jigger. Excellent. Yep. Oh yes. Oh yes. Using my Jack Daniels two ounce jigger. There we go. So two ounces of gin. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where his hands been. And I gonna, I halfway washed them before. And I'm gonna do about ice. one and a half of simple. I, I like it a little, a little bit on more. A little bit, on the little bit more spiritful. Oh yeah. I'm not, I'm not gonna complain about that. Like one of my um, sorry for the audio. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say I have a friend that's his favorite drink is a is a gimlet. Yeah. And he likes the way I make it because he says, and I quote, it tastes like pine salt. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm like, all right. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, and that's a gimlet. That. Nice and simple. Mm -hmm. uh, I go one step further. I don't even add simple syrup to it. Oh, you just you just <laughs> I like just the, do gin and lime. You just gin and lime. Gin I've and done lime. gin and lime before. It's Actually, good. I like yeah, gin and grapefruit yep. juice is also good too. You want a little lime garnish to that, or I think we're good. Uh, I think we're good. Okay, let me just try this. Cheers, Cheers, buddy. Cheers, everyone. What are you drinking tonight? Let me know in the comments. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, um, that's tart. Oh yeah, and ginny. Ooh, mm. yeah. Ooh, I like that gin. Yeah. 
that gives it a, a real tart sour mm -hmm. note to it mm -hmm. that's uh that's usually not present it's still in got those really good botanicals in there yeah Ooh, i like that They're very very good mm. well it's been a great show thank you all see you next yeah, week we'll see you later <laughs> that was it <laughs> i'm just gonna drink gin all night all right so uh you want to pull up first uh you sure. in there let's do the first Co one mr co-pilot you bet all right first scene change let's see if the audio stays are we still good are we still good we still, still good? hear us still, still hear good. us huh? Huh? sound good okay uh let's see tea or gray hot peppermint tea decaf R Earl, audio is out of sync audio is out of sync uh -oh. What the heck happened? It was, it was okay just a second you ago. You all said it sounded good. It was out before the scene change. What the heck? Mm. And there goes the audio drift. I. Uh, it's got to be something YouTube's. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I know it's YouTube. The thing is, I'm using XSplit, and I'm using the codec that, that YouTube prefers in XSplit. I'm using just a standard audio driver to send it over to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. It seemed to work like right off the bat. At least YouTube is up. Yeah. <laughs> At least it wasn't down yeah. like it was yesterday. So, uh, how bad is the audio delay? Uh, let me know. You know what? I've got headphones here. I think I can check it. How's the uh, audio? Is it not... Is it not um... It's not terrible. It's not terrible. Uh, it's uh, maybe a quarter second. And we'll just let it slide for a while. Yeah, and see if I, it I think we're gonna itself. let it slide. We're gonna see if it fixes itself. Just because okay. I, I don't want to go messing with it. Right. Um. Anyway, we got stories of beer and candy corn to get to. Uh, about a second, they're saying. What? <laughs> Hold on. Wow. So I'm gonna. Sorry. Now I'm going to listen. See what happens. Yeah. That's okay. I got my gimlet to drink. Yeah, on my... I don't know. Yeah, some people are saying audio is fine. Some people are saying it's delayed. Um, on my side, it's delayed between an eighth and a quarter of a second. And, and that's if it's that much. Yeah. It could be just um, how YouTube is compressing the audio, and yeah. audio at the same time. Um, Who knows? Yeah, I, I'm going to leave it. I, I apologize if it's off for you guys. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sending zero, 0 and I check sync beforehand, and locally it is perfect. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually did a marker card with it earlier. So, um, yeah, clap again. Do, 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 do. There you go. So, yep, I'm not going to worry about it. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Nothing the little gin can't fix. All right, yep. Hmm. There you go. Slip it back. So, uh, this is a thing from a Spirit Halloween store. Or no, from to put you in the Halloween spirit. Excuse yes. me. The Spirit <laughs> Halloween store. Oh, yeah. wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> I thought mm. I read the article, then I saw a Halloween spirit. Anyway, uh, something to put you in the Halloween spirit. Mm -hmm. um, this time of year, especially, you see a lot of the coffee places doing some really weird flavor combinations. And the beer industry has kind of taken notice. Yeah, they, I mean, in the past, there's been plenty of pumpkin beers. Plenty of pumpkin beers. Plenty beer. of pumpkin beers. Just ask John. Yeah. Well, yeah, we talked about that. Although, funny enough, because uh, my wife is a big fan of the <clears> pumpkin <throat> beers, and we went up to John's Marketplace to get pumpkin beers, because mm -hmm. she couldn't find any our local stores. Really? At zero. We couldn't find any. I've got like three or four down in the fridge. Yeah, I saw that. I saw you got, you're getting ready for Halloween yeah. themed. By, by the way, John's on for Halloween. Yeah, so that's good. We're, we're doing pumpkin beers on Halloween. Uh, but yeah, we had to go all the way up to John's Marketplace to find some. And even yeah. then, they didn't have a huge selection of them. No. It was just like... Interesting. Because yeah, yeah uh, I went to... I was in Fred Meyer, and there were like six or seven different ones really? to choose huh. from. Uh, Costco had some. Uh, liquor store had some. Yeah, either, either we got there late and they were all gone, or... I, I did buy mine a couple There's weeks nothing. ago, so maybe that's okay, it. Okay, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so weird uh, beer flavors. Mm -hmm. Candy corn beer. <laughs> Which is a very odd choice, I think. Yeah. Because I don't think candy corn has much of a flavor. It do, It's kind of a waxy, sugar. just sweet. Yeah, waxy sugar. It's not bottle. corn and it's not candy. No. <laughs> In fact, funny enough, uh, a friend of ours who homebrews, mm -hmm. he actually uses candy corn as a adjunct to up the sugar content mm -hmm. 
death to gravity. He just I'm, throws I'm it. sure it'd be great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, I mean, that's, it's fine. Although this article right here doesn't say that they necessarily put candy corn in the beer. Mm -hmm. Just it's a candy, candy corn inspired candy corn flavor. Inspired flavor, which right. means sugar. Yep. Uh, that's, <laughs> I don't I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what sugar or what flavor candy corn is supposed to have. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> either. Um, now, this is uh, West Allian Brewing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, creating a candy corn beer to get you in the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and WCVB, this is exactly why people hate uh, local news websites is because... I, I'm getting like nine pop-ups for, hey, your ad blocker is disabled. Yeah. While still you have ads coming through. <laughs> so I can only imagine how god-awful your regular site is. <laughs> it's got to be just god-awful. Full page overlays and autoplay oh, yeah. videos. I've, like that. I, I, I've already got what looks like three autoplay videos trying to go right now. So, yeah, there's a reason I use ad blocker. It's because your page freaking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I mean, I'd try it. I'd try it too. I don't have yeah. any high hopes for something like no. that. No. But they need to have a ghost flavored haunted beer. Yeah. As long as it's not Randy inspired. It <laughs> tastes like. Ooh, spooky ghost. Spooky ghost. ghost too. <laughs> Sorry, that's a dirty joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, getting off on the wrong foot here. Oh, yeah. uh, people are saying the audio is back in sync now after they refreshed. Okay. So, yeah, hopefully it was just you guys <laughs> yeah so all right uh steve we all know that drinking is we'll, we'll just say healthy for you oh yeah of course yeah it's, it's you know you go absolutely to the, healthy for i go you. to the doctor and he says hey how many drinks have you had that's right always ask me that that's right like, oh, you gotta up those numbers those are rookie numbers, rookie numbers. those are rookie you gotta bring numbers. those gotta numbers up, up. <laughs> yeah uh, my, mine says the same thing yeah um i mean I, I he goes how many drinks per week do you have and i said per week yes <laughs> and <laughs> And, and I tell him four, and he goes, man. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming same yeah, thing. Yeah, so you got to bring him up. <laughs> yeah, got to bring him up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Bill Coors, uh, influential beer industry leader, dies at the age of 102. 102. And I can only assume it's because he drank so much water over his lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that, what it was. That's yeah, uh, the Coors light water. Yeah. He, that, he, may have, he may have bathed in the vats a yep. couple times, too. Might have. Is my mouse dying? My mouse is dying. Uh -oh. Of course it is. Yes. Yeah, it's dying. Great. Oh, no. Oh, uh, hold on. I think I got some batteries here. Just stealing from other devices. As you're going to have uh, got a dead, dead mouse. Yes. Be haunted by the ghost of a dead and what's, mouse. And what's really funny is this is my rechargeable mouse, but I'm not using it on my main PC anymore. I'm using it on my streaming PC. There and it so it's been... Oh, wait. Backwards? High quality production here, folks. Yeah. Now I've got nothing. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Wired mice time. Um, wow. <laughs> what the heck? Are those both dead? Uh, I was playing it yesterday. I don't think they are. Oh. Two seconds. <laughs> it's going to go for the wired mouse. The tried and true. Going for some. I'm just going for more drinks. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with the wired mouse. I told you. <laughs> you never go wrong with the wired mouse. Uh, or wired keyboard. Not as aesthetically pleasing, but what, one of my never fails. Favorite uh, budget mice, the EVGA Torx X3. There we go. Not a bad looking mouse. Yeah. Kind of looks like a Cylon. Yeah. Yeah. So which one's it? There we go. Oh, there we go. There we I was go. like, wait a second. <laughs> it was starting to freak me out there. Yeah. So, all right. We're back in business. Okay. No more audio problems. No, no more audio problems, problems. No more mouse problems. We are rocking and rolling. Uh, so, yeah, Bill Coors. Uh, lots of drinking problems. Lots of drinking problems. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Thank you for bringing that, Steve. Oh, that's that so delicious. Good. So yeah, Bill Coors uh, passed away at the ripe old age of 102 this 102, week. 102, all 102. thanks to beer, I would think. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I would assume. And the piles and piles of money that he probably has. Yep. Didn't help, I don't, I yeah. don't think. 
Um, another man passed away this week with piles and piles of money. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Paul Allen died. This wasn't even yeah. on our notes. Um, yeah. I don't know why. It um, should have been, I guess. Microsoft co-founder, 1975. Yeah. Uh, Vulcan Inc., also owner of the local Portland Trailblazers mm-hmm. and uh, Seattle, Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks yeah. um, so uh, one of those guys who literally has a finger in every single industry on the planet. Yeah. Um, I mean, owns two major sports franchises. Um and uh, and was also a co-founder for Microsoft. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting week. Uh, died at sixty-five That's from a young. relapse of uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. lymphoma yep. Um, yeah, and and it kind of came as a shock because he he dealt with it in two thousand nine. He didn't look great in two thousand nine. A lot yeah. of people were kind of wondering back then. And then he made a full recovery. He was in complete yep. remission. Everything was clear. He announced two weeks ago that that, that, it, that it had come back and. But yeah, that the diagnosis was hopeful because I guess there has been new treatments. There's yeah, there's new things. treatments and there's things that are, you know, that that uh, that could work for him. And all of a sudden he just gone, gone. So, yeah, Paul Allen, age of sixty-five, kind of a kind of a sad week. It's got the blue screen of death yep. permanently. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> Bill Corr is riding that silver bullet in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. I don't know why. I look John to see on YouTube. I mean, I mean, look up here and look down here. Yeah. The color is completely off. They are completely different. Completely off. What the I look like crap a little, are you I look, doing, I look YouTube? Like, I look like a, I'm a little jaundiced down there. Yeah, that, that's what I was saying. I look John to see. Uh, you know, my skin tone is plenty natural on my preview window, and all of a sudden down on YouTube, it's like this green-yellow affair. Yeah. I'm gonna change. Like we're, we're Simpsons characters. I'm gonna change the lights because that's bugging the hell out of me. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we'll see how it looks like downstairs. Yeah. Well, do that one too. There we go. See if that helps. Something that only I'm gonna be worried or be bugged about, but let's see if that helps. Yeah, that looks a little better. Yeah, I don't look quite so not nasty as nasty, but it's still kind of yeah. Yeah. Uh, the color's still way off, but it's better. Yeah. <laughs> we'll live. Okay. Uh, my local billionaire just died. Owned the Chargers. Chargers oh. owner died? Wow, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of football teams up for sale now. You should go buy one. The Seahawks aren't doing that great. They might be in yeah. a, they might be on a, a bargain sale. Yeah. Chargers owner, Chargers though. Patriarch Alex Spanos. Or Char- Char- Chargers Patriarch. I don't oh, think Alex he was Spanos. current owner. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Alex, Alex Spanos. Spanos is, yeah. Um, but I don't think he is the current owner. No, I think he was. Yeah, he, he was the owner, and I believe he had already passed it on to, yeah. I believe, his kids. Yeah. If I remember right. Yeah. Color looks way better. Background is very blue. Mm-hmm. Blue Oregon looks tan, yeah. best in this studio. I was trying to go for green because I'm wearing a blue shirt today. I was trying to contrast it a little bit. <laughs> YouTube is just messing the heck out of my colors, yeah, though. We, we look a little like Simpsons characters. Yeah. I, the color balance is great on my monitor. Mm-hmm. It's not so great down there, which is just weird. Oregon tan. Actually, we don't tan. We rust. Yeah, we rust. Yeah. Uh, the last couple days have been weird in Oregon. Because it, I have scraped ice off my yeah. windshield in the morning and then taken the convertible down on the way home. It's it's been like in the mid seventies during the day, but yep. in the evening it's almost it's been freezing. As soon as the sun goes down, it is thirty eight really, outside. Yeah, it's cold. And then this morning I scraped ice off my my Z three fifty convertible yep. window in the, the morning. Mid, it starts getting really had warm. my heated seats and the heater cranked on in the morning mm-hmm. with the top up and I'm just on the way to work. But I wore shorts and, and a and a short sleeve on the way to work because I knew the afternoon was going to be warm. Got out at lunchtime and it's 72 degrees yeah. and, and bright blue sky and Super absolutely nice. beautiful. Um, yeah. What's my thoughts on the new YouTube premiere feature? Um, I won't be using it because I can never premiere a video when I'm able to watch it with you guys. Um, and that's just because I don't do this full time. Uh, I, I work full time for uh, uh, my own employer. Uh, eventually, I'd love to. Someday. But, but someday. Um, occasionally I do a Saturday release, but I try to do Tuesdays and Fridays, uh, for my release schedule. Um, so, and unfortunately just with YouTube algorithms, I've got to launch right around usually between 8am and 12 
and 12 p.m. Yeah. is when I need to launch so my videos actually get some traction. Um, and that's a time when I'm working. So usually when my videos launch, they're scheduled launches. Yeah, so. you have them queued up, yeah. ready to go. I think it's a cool system. I think it's a little bit flawed at the moment still. Um, I've heard a number of people complaining about they've used it and people aren't sure what's going on. Is this a broadcast? Is this a premiere? Are, are, am I chatting with someone? Is this, yeah. Uh, hey Jeff, do you still use your Mac Pro? I do not and I'm actually working on selling it. Um, the <laughs> reason I don't use my Mac Pro is it cannot edit 4K video. Um, did you hear that? He's just he's live right now. You can buy his Mac Pro. That's right. He'll sign it for you and everything. That's right. Uh, you got to pay shipping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the the Mac Pro, it worked just fine when I was using uh, bit rates at about 25 to 35 megabit on my video. As soon as I went to a 50 megabit video feed um, for my Sony a6000, mm -hmm. uh, I could not scrub a timeline in Adobe Premiere anymore. It just would it not just wouldn't it. handle yeah. it. And, and I had my, the same GTX 1050 Ti was in my Mac Pro. So I know the video card's capable of it, my, but, the, but those CPUs just would not hold up. Um, so yeah, that's why. I'll give you 150, pass. <laughs> uh, I've oh, got way better offers than yeah. that, sorry. Hell, I've got 64 gigs of RAM in it. That's worth 200 bucks right there. All right, uh, moving right along. Uh, this one was funny. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> like this one. <laughs> yes, this one was good. What is the manliest man who ever manned that you've ever known? Uh, you mean besides Mr. T? Besides Mr. T. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Uh, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris is up there. Yeah. This is this is a very Chuck Norris esque story. Yeah. This is this is pretty much. Uh, I'm okay. just gonna read the headline. Man fights off shark, stitches his own wounds, goes down to the goes to get a beer at the pub. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing I want to do. Headline says it all. Now, obviously, it's, it's New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but a man was bit by a shark out uh, out when he was uh, uh, snorkeling in the reef. Yeah. Uh, punched the shark, fended off the shark. Oh, he stabbed the shark. Oh, yeah, he stabbed punched, the shark. Stabbed, stabbed it. Yeah. He had a knife. Yeah, ha had a knife, gutted the shark. Um, uh, basically, it bit him in the calf, is, yeah. is from what, what I gather. Yeah. Uh, and uh, stabbed the shark, swam his way to shore, yeah. stitched up his wound wounds on the shore, went down to the pub and grabbed a pint. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's like, all right, <laughs> time to get drunk. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess you know, you live in New Zealand. You live in a spot yep. where just about everything out there can kill you. Yep. You're going to carry a knife with you no matter what. No, absolutely. You know, you're going to go. He's probably, like, used to it. It's like, ah, that's my weekly I'm, shark attack. I mean, I, I carry a knife, but that's for slicing limes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not, <laughs> not for shark attacks. Right. That's why you got the whole crocodile Dundee. Oh, it's not a knife. That's not this a, is knife. a knife. This is a knife. This is a knife. That's right. So, yeah, uh, James Grant, we salute you. That's right. Over here at Craft Computing. <laughs> Does not specify, the article did not specify what type of beer he had. Right. Just specified just a beer. A beer. Yeah. If it was a light beer, then... Uh, if it was some... me, it'd probably be, get me a beer. <laughs> yeah, what kind I, did you want? Did I specify? It <laughs> just doesn't matter. Or do, do, the, uh, do the James Bond. Does it look like I give a damn? <laughs> it's either beer or whiskey. That's right. Hmm. So that brings up a, a good debate. So if you had just been bit by a star, a shark, and had stitched up your own wounds, beer or whiskey? Whiskey. whiskey. Oh, definitely. Whiskey. I do whiskey. Yep. I think I need that shock to my system. I'm definitely yep. at whiskey. Yep. I'm definitely, give me a shot first, and then give me like a whiskey and water. Yeah. So that, that'd be that'd be my, uh, something to, to slam something, real quick. Yeah, something there. Take the edge off the adrenaline. I mean, but maybe he's just so used to shark bites that so he's just like, ah, oh, this is like this is like a normal weekend for me. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a Tuesday. <laughs> it's just a Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I carry a knife. Pulls out the duct tack. <laughs> yep, I do carry a knife. Ugh. I actually keep it up on top of my liquor cabinet. Oh yeah, that's where most people keep their knives. That's right. You gotta you gotta have a defense system. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> This thing is scary sharp, too. It is. <laughs> Something with a heavy peat. Yeah. Oh, the peat. I. I clad it. I clad that peat. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, video card news. That is right. We got some video card launches. 
Something, so, something that everybody's been waiting for. That's right. So the RTX 2070 officially numbers came out yesterday and offici officially launches, I believe, today. Yeah, you can go buy it right now. You can now. go buy it today. Yeah. Um, although it's been on store shelves for a week. Yeah. Um, so uh, is he related to Jack Sparrow? No, no, he didn't uh, ride a pair of sea turtles to safety. He stabbed a shark. There, there's a difference. Um, so RTX 2070 numbers came out yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I think it's unfortunately about what we all expected. Yeah. Um, now, I was on record as saying, I think the 2070 is going to be the largest leap from the previous generation if you look at the 70 series versus the, the 80 series yeah. versus the, the 90 yeah. or versus the TI series. Yeah. Uh, um, somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah. I'm disappointed where it landed, though. Mm -hmm. it, 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 especially it, because of... NVIDIA's fictitious uh, MSRP. It's the MSRP yeah. that does not exist. Yes. It's barely eaten by the 1080. Mm -hmm. Barely eaten by it. Um, it's at 1080p and 1440. It has a distinct advantage over the 1080. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, and that's just from CUDA processing and, and generational improvements. It's, it's not leaps and bounds. It's not huge. It's... Three to five percent. Yeah, I mean it's like marginally above, and in some cases it's getting beat by the 1080, and in some cases it's getting beat by the Vega 64 and 56. Yes, I know. Um, those, depends so, on the game. Yeah, yeah, it depends on the game. game. But uh, I was actually really shocked to see the Vega 64 scoring as well as it did mm -hmm. on a lot of the benchmark charts that I saw today. Yeah, there's quite a few out there. Um, that might be a kind of a dark horse return. I mean, if we're being honest, it was scoring well and. We all know AMD ages like a fine wine and takes a little bit more to get refined and right. takes a little bit more to hammer out. A lot of the charts that I saw had that Vega 56 over the 1080 even. And if you can pick one up for 400, 450 bucks, That's which I've seen car, them yeah. going for, Vega 56 might be the card to get right, or Vega 64, excuse me, might be the card to get right now if, if I'm going to put my money down on something. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, the 2070 is a great card. The 1080 is a great card. Um, but I mean, longevity wise, that might be the one to get. Yeah. Who knows where this is going to go yep. with the, t the two. Yep. So a lot of numbers coming out. Um, like I said, there's for what I was seeing. In fact, I should have had this queued up already. I didn't. Um, yeah, there's quite a few. I had some, what I thought would be numbers for, where did I put that? Titled spreadsheet. Oh, did you do some nope. calculations? I did some calculations when all of this first launched, um, or when when the numbers were first rumored. Um, talking head, yeah, down. Tom's hardware was not very kind. No, they weren't at all. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> I might have deleted it. I don't think I did, but oh well. Anyway. Um, I had thought that there's going to be about a 40 to 50% improvement over the 1070 um, or over the 1070 Ti. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Yeah. Um, it's scoring about equal with a board partner 1070 Ti and a board partner 1080. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's disappointing to me, especially at 550 to $600. Yeah. That price um, point does not bode Price well. point doesn't make sense, mm -mm. especially because we know it's half as capable in ray tracing yes. as, as its brethren. And we already know ray tracing is going to basically come up and kick games in the balls. Yeah. It's just going to um, slam it and make them just chug along. Right. Uh, so you're going to play RTX games at 25 FPS? That's why I spent $600. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and a 1080p. At right. That. And, and, and I've said before, I don't mind the fact that NVIDIA is trying something new. This is how you progress marketplaces. Uh, this is how you develop new technologies. you got to let someone try it first. Early um, adopters, they push the market, but right. I don't want to be one of those early adopters. Right. So. <laughs> yeah, the, the problem is here, I'm not seeing any benefit. I mean, RTX cards have been out on the market a month now. Mm -hmm. And there's still not a single RTX game that you not can play. Not a single one. And there's only like three tech demos that you can play. Yeah, one, of, just... one of them is a Star Wars 30 second scene. One of them is a uh, Final Fantasy 15 DLSS yeah. uh, demo. And another the, the, another one is like this NVIDIA ray tracing box. Yeah. That's it. So why are you buying that card? And I haven't seen any of those tech demos in any of the benchmarking 
them. No, no one's doing no them one's... because they're not real world. Yeah. They're going to be slanted towards NVIDIA's of side. Course. But I'm talking about just the performance difference of mm -hmm. how they say RTX should perform between the 2080 and the 2070. Right. Oh, that's true. I haven't seen that. Yeah, no, yeah, no one's doing doing those comparisons. That's actually an interesting point that I haven't seen it here. Tell you what, someone send me a, a 2080 Ti, 2080 and 2070, and I'll, I'll benchmark <laughs> I'll do that. that, that for I'll, I'll do that benchmark for you guys. <laughs> I will uh, put that You'll sacrifice forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people looking for use 1080 Ti's. Uh, enable RTX Hairworks there for FPS. Yeah, uh, no doubt. Uh, you forgot physics. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, it's... Yeah, all those... Mm. I, I don't know if it's going to be... Because they were touting this RTX as being a big groundbreaking thing. I think DLSS is going to be big. Yeah. I, I, I think it's going to enable higher resolutions at a better frame rate if it ever gets off the ground and if, if anyone ever implements it. And, yeah. that, and that's a big if because DLSS is all based off machine learning mm -hmm. as, as basically eliminating anti-aliasing. And we know anti-aliasing has gotten better in recent years uh, with FXAA and SMAA. Right, right. And, and you go down that list of technologies versus just straight up anti-aliasing, which was basically super rendering. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we know that's gotten to the point where it almost taxes your video card about 2%. Yeah, it doesn't It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't take much. anything It used anymore. to be the anti-aliasing really ate up a lot oh, of Oh, it, it yeah. wreaked havoc on your system. And anymore, it's like, oh yeah, I'm dropping two or three FPS, but... All of a sudden, all those jaggies go away, and I only yeah. I only ever use two X AA anyway. Yeah, I don't. You don't need more than that. Yeah, um, and it ends up looking too blurry. Right, exactly. Um, so DLSS, just like SLI, has to have profiles enabled for that game because mm -hmm. it has to go through and chew through that game and do its machine learning process for that game. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen in real time. You have to download a profile for that game. Yeah. Uh, so unless the developers support that, or and unless there's a third there. party that is able to chew through those numbers and then put Crack out a out public put profile, that profile, yeah, uh, that's going to be difficult. Uh, so again, it's like it's a cool technology. Well, I mean, they they could always implement it within because everybody's got the the Nvidia experience thing sitting on there. If they implement some kind of cloud thing where someone has it, they crank it out for that particular game, gets uploaded to the cloud, the other yep. people start downloading it. If they make it a little more seamless I'm like that, it could be okay. I'm sure they could, but they won't because NVIDIA's never done uh, community-generated profiles for anything uh, before. If they were smart, maybe they would do if, something like yeah, that. You're talking about NVIDIA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was that was a little overly harsh. I'm I'm just I'm frustrated like everyone else with Nvidia's marketing, with the mistakes that they're making in this launch. This launch mm -hmm. has just been fumbled and befuddled, and uh, it's all all marketing and no substance. It's all yeah, it's all marketing, and there's nothing behind it. And mm -hmm. if there was something behind it, I'd be hyped for it. Oh yeah. But the problem is, it's it's like it's a generational improvement at best. It's way more expensive than it than it deems yeah. worthy to be. Yeah. The features that you spent three hours at Gamescom talking about don't exist today yeah uh you can't test it you can't use it you can't you can't experience a game with it yeah uh when we tried the rtx demo at PAX, at pax yeah. they were so tight-lipped about everything they wouldn't answer any questions although they, at least they didn't tell me i couldn't talk about it publicly right like they right. did for yeah. for luke up, up a line of stack um they go oh some little shill youtuber yeah whatever yeah uh we don't care uh but everything has been just so tight-lipped and controlled. And when you try to control the narrative, <laughs> Intel, um, <laughs> often it ends up backfiring on you. I mean, I mean, take the, the, the Intel situation this last week with, oh, yeah. with uh, Pinnacle Technologies. Mm -hmm. um, they're trying to control the narrative too much, and it's coming back to bite them oh, in the yeah. butt. It's like, we all knew the 9900K was going to be the performance king. Regardless of price to performance, it was going to be the all game. comers, mm -hmm. period. End of discussion. It's the 8700K with two more cores. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Yeah. Why are you trying to hype it as the world's best gaming processor and commissioning reviews 10 days in advance that are intentionally slighted? Yeah. Intentionally biased. Intentionally yeah. misleading. As if no one's you ever don't call need you out to on do that. that. Yeah. You, you, you had a winner. Just, just roll with Let it. Let it rest on its own laurels. Yeah. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't know. And NVIDIA, why? I, I know you're demoing a new tech, but why are you going about this song and dance about how ray tracing is the be all end all? And oh, we don't talk about rasterization anymore. Yeah. Well, that's all we can play right now. So that's all that's we're going to talk do, about. Yeah. So if you came out and you said, 
The 1080 today, or excuse me, the 2080 today mm. performs the same or slightly better at the same resolutions as the 2080 or as the 1080 Ti of the last mm. generation. Cool, I'm sold. Yeah. Similar price. By the way, also give us a, a actual price point that someone will actually hit. Mm -hmm. um, but if you came out and you said for $800, the RTX 2080 is the same performance that you get out of the 1080 Ti, but with ray tracing and Tensor Core enabled. So if you're into machine learning, if you're into micro data center stuff, yeah. if you want to get into that kind of stuff, that's going to be there. There's also some really cool features coming out for games that we hope some developers are going to implement shortly. We would have ate that hook, line, sinker, and this would have been yeah. a completely different narrative. But nope. you tried to control they the narrative. Control the narrative. Overly hyped marketing mm -hmm. jargon. Right. So um, until it's like Ferrari, they don't need to advertise because of the cars or high-end processors sell themselves. They did. They did. Not They're anymore. not necessarily anymore. Anymore, they're still the fastest out there, and it's still kind of undisputed. At least with the 9900K, 9800K. Mm. 8700K, those processors are fine because at 4.7 gigahertz, they're smoking, well, I, I say smoking, they're beating the 2700X by between five and 15%. They're just beating them in every single benchmark performance. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to performance per dollar, they're getting their butts handed to them. Yeah. And when it comes to everything from the i5 8600 and below, they're losing. Yeah, they're not doing good on their budget. Yeah. And they're starting to lose in the data center too. And that's what's going to bite them. And I've, I've said this many times on this show. That's what's going to bite them. Uh, yeah, is, that's going to be their bread and butter. Is when, is when all of a sudden that performance per dollar starts swinging over to AMD's camp when it comes to Epic processors. And, and when people buy server farms, they don't buy a server stack or a processor or two like the, the consumer market. They go, yeah, we're going to do a $2 billion rollout. Yeah. Let's, let's, we're going let's to buy get, AMD this time around. Let's get truckloads of it. Right. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's uh, Epic is coming. Data center is up for grabs. Couldn't couldn't have said it better myself. Mm -hmm. um, it, it it is coming and it is coming with a vengeance. Yeah. Um, and Intel is going to lose that fight. And I oh, think yeah. Intel knows they're going to lose that fight. Yeah. Um, and I think Intel knows as soon as seven nanometer Ryzen drops in March, they're going to lose that fight too. Mm -hmm. And so right now they're they're trying to get every single dollar out that they can. They're squeezing the market as best they can. If you spend six hundred dollars on a ninety nine hundred K. You're a sucker today. Yeah. You're an absolute sucker. Because when Ryzen 2 drops in, in March with 7 nanometer and they have better IPC performance than Intel and better multi-core performance and more cores available to them and lower latency and better RAM speed and they're just straight up better and cheaper. Well, if you have more more money than cents, then go for right. it. Right, right, and go for it. <laughs> um, but when those drop in March and they are the better platform to go with, uh, I think Intel's just planning a price drop. But the, but the thing is, they either have to beat AMD in performance, which mm -hmm. they're not going to do, going to. or they have to outprice them, which is going to tank them as a company because they have high profit margins. They have yeah. for the last six, seven, eight years. That's, yeah, that's why they have everything all cranked up mm -hmm. right now. As soon as the competition heats up, those prices are mm -hmm. going to drop. Yep. Um, uh, the other thing is Intel's facing a part shortage right now because their fabs are so behind. Yeah. Um, their fabs are so behind... Um, because they cannot move their CPUs over to 10 nanometer, their chipsets have always lagged behind by about a generation. So if you bought a 14 nanometer CPU, you were probably getting 16 or 20 nanometer fabs on your mm -hmm. chipset, on your motherboards, and on your other yeah. other equipment. Um, and then when the CPU made the jump up to the next step, so let's say they went to 12 or 10, It'll then the chipsets over. would move to 14. Yeah. Well, the chipsets have caught up with the chips. Uh, and so all of a sudden, everything Intel's cranking out has been 14 nanometer for some time. Yeah. They can't keep up with demand for that. So on some of their H310 chipsets, they've actually moved that back to 20 nanometer. Really? They're because, getting bigger now. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, because they couldn't keep up with demand and they said, well, screw it. We don't care about the, the lower spin, end chips. Did they spin up some of their old fabs? Is that kind of what yeah. they did? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah they, they, they stopped to roll out of their 10 nanometer fabs and they went back to 20 or 18 or 16 or whatever the heck it was mm -hmm. before. Uh, I don't remember. It was 2014. Yeah. It's a while ago. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, they spun up some of their old fabs and moved their lower-end chipsets over to those old fabs to keep them off the 14 nanometer fabs. Mm -hmm. um, they could crank out more than... The problem yeah. is Intel is still saying it's going to be at least over a year until their 10 nanometer fabs are ready yep. to, to run out in bulk. And that's if they ever get there. There's no guarantee they're going to get there. Yeah, they're still... They're still big. Well, they, they were supposed to do it... Mm -hmm. Was it 2016, I think they said they were going to do it? Right. Yeah. 
Um, did we put that note in there? I don't there, think there, so. Yeah, it is. It is, it is in there. The, oh, okay. the Intel, Intel shake-up. So go ahead and pull, yeah. up, pull up that okay, one. Okay, go pull that one up. Okay. Do, 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 do. It's a couple do, forward. Do, 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 right there. Do, not, that, not that one. Uh, yep, there you go. Yep, there it is. Um, that's scene three. I want scene two. <laughs> camera one, camera two. Camera one, camera two. Well, I, I was on F1 and F3 before, and I changed my scenes up, so now I'm F1 and F2. So it makes more sense, but I'm still used to doing the skipping, right. a, skipping a number. Um, hey, we're back. <laughs> um, so... Intel's head of their fabrication division. Um, what was his name? I'm drawing a blank now. Oh, he's down here. Um, uh, Ahmed. Name. Ahmed, yeah. It's only Ahmed. Um, he has announced that next month he's going to retire. Uh, to pretty much thunderous applause. Yeah, everyone's <laughs> From what I understand. Yeah. Um, they're very happy. Now, he has been heading up Intel's fab division, I believe, since 2011? Maybe even before that. Yeah. Um, and they were supposed to make the leap to 10 nanometer sometime in 2016. And in 2015, they announced that they weren't no, going to make it. It was originally due in 2015. In 2015, excuse 2015, me. Yeah. Excuse me. I, I said 16 at the beginning. Yeah. 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 So they originally supposed to jump to 10 nanometer in 2015. They announced that they were going to delay that to 2016. Yes. And then to 2017. 16. And then, and then to Q1 was, 2018. Yeah. Yeah, it's still. Yeah, they're, they're, and, they're and, in, gonna... and in between that, Ryzen launched and started putting the hammer down on yeah. Intel or, or kind of going, we're not going quietly. Hey, mm. we're, we might be back. We yeah. might be back. Um, and Intel goes, well, we're going to have to delay till, till Q1 to 2018. Oh, till Q3 2018. Oh, till Q1 2019. Oh, yeah. now it's going to be like Q3, Q4 2019. Yeah. They don't know if they're going to make it. Meanwhile, AMD already has a proven seven nanometer fab rolling. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're gonna smack the crap out of Intel <laughs> so bad. Yeah. Uh, so part of uh, uh, Ahmed's retirement is going to be a little bit of a shakeup in Intel's manufacturer division. Um, so Intel owns pretty much all of their own fabs. Um, a lot of them are here in Hillsboro, Oregon. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just up the road from us. Um, but they are dividing them into three divisions. They're going to be a technology division, a manufacturing division, and a supply chain revision. And they are all going to um, uh, be under the direction of Murthy. I'm not going to try to pronounce his name because just out of oh. respect, I, I can't. I, I can't. Think a, I, think, I think I tried um, pronouncing yeah. it earlier today. Uh, Venkata oh, yeah. Ranachintala. Ranachintala. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Brendan Chintala, yeah. Like so, Chintala, yeah. Uh, Murthy yeah. Is, is how he's known. That's, that's probably um, right. So all, all will be under his direction, but they're going to be three separate divisions within the manufacturing division. Um, and they're hoping this brings a little bit of streamlining. This brings some new R&D to it. This yeah. brings better supply chain management and procurement. Um, yeah, they snake somebody off of Qualcomm too. Yeah. 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 So. so hopefully this, this shows a little bit of, I, I don't think it's going to help. Yeah, this the turnaround. I, I have on, no on reason to be optimistic for Intel right now. None at all. Not they have given me nothing. Not for the next couple of years. Right. Not for the, the next couple the, of years. The only thing that Intel has done within the last two years is they have soldered the IHS onto the 9000 series K series chips and added 200 megahertz to them. Yeah. Clock for clock, it's the same as the 800 series yeah. or not, 8000 series. They're not doing any groundbreaking things. Right. Nothing. Right. They're not improving their silicon. Nope. They're not getting better. In fact, in some divisions, they're rolling back because yeah, they don't have enough supply. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is not looking good. Yeah. Um, Intel is a starving camel. AMD is the fattening horse. Yeah, and Intel's been riding that camel hump for... A long time. Eight years? Yeah, yeah. Like I said, this is just, Nah this is just Nahalem refined. They're in the middle of the desert right now. Right. On a horse with no name. <laughs> That's a good song. That was great. That was uh, an excellent, excellent cocktail. Mm. Might have another one of those after the show. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna say no. So we got another lime. So as much props as we just gave AMD, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, they did something a little odd this week in the Chinese market. While I get a couple of glasses here. Yes, there we go. Nope, that's not the one. There we go. I think these are the only 12 ounce glasses I have in here. So. 
But that's okay. These are only 12 ounce cans. So we have this beer. Um, Fugly. Fugly, yeah. <laughs> this is a very interesting beer. I've never had it before. Uh, it's got yuzu fruit and ugly fruit in yep. it. Uh, yuzu fruit is a Japanese citrus fruit. And yes. And ugly fruit is a Jamaican citrus fruit. Yep. So this is by Osaka Blues Brewery in Colorado. Uh, it's a 5.8%. And uh, it's an ale? No, it's Oscar. Or it's a fruit IPA. Oscar Blues. Uh, Oscar Blues. Oscar. A O S K A. I, I wrote Osaka. Osaka. You, 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 you said Japanese inspired, <laughs> and I went Osaka. Oh, I like these old spaghetti factory glasses. This is awesome. That's right. This is good. It's all like, like uh, highball glasses. Yep. <laughs> Don't think I ever. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a head on it. It sure does. It smells very citrusy. Yes, I. Yeah, I can smell it from here. I'm going to slow down the pour here. Yep. I ruined it right at the offset, and it, it just wasn't giving it up. <laughs> so we'll wait a second. Yeah, I don't think mine's much better. These are great for, like, uh, vodka tonics, gin and tonics, oh, yeah, yeah, things yeah. like that. They're pre-measured. You just load them with ice. You fill up the gin to the line, and then you... You, you didn't have any pint glasses up there? I, I, they're all downstairs. Oh, I forgot to bring downstairs. them up. Okay. Yeah, I ran them through the dishwasher a couple days ago. Well, you did have John here last week, so... It yeah, it was, uh, whew, yeah, it was a week. It's all greasy. <laughs> So did you see my uh, my EK video while we're waiting for these beers to settle down? I did actually yeah. watch that. Yeah. So, which one do you like better? Actually, like you like the yeah. copper. Uh -huh. I think John would like this one. You think so? This one has a Nickelback. Oh. <laughs> it's a Nickelback. Yeah. That one was just for John. Yeah. I don't know if he's out there watching. He might not be. <laughs> he might not be, but uh, we'll see if anyone got the joke. <laughs> Anyway, speaking of all the things AMD is, AMD is doing right, they're still doing a couple things that are a little weird. Kooky. A little kooky. Kooky little, for Kookabus. A little counter to... Thanks <laughs> 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 for bringing that back in my head. Uh, join the Patreon. You'll understand those jokes. <laughs> kooky crisp. Uh, so AMD launched uh, a new graphics card. Yeah, new. A new graphics card. <laughs> Uh, only in the Chinese market, it looks like. Yeah. Um, now, we gave NVIDIA <laughs> quite a bit of crap this last year when DRAM shortages were abundant mm -hmm. and, and they started producing the GT1030 with DDR4 memory and not specifying that it was a different SKU. Mm -hmm. Calling it a GT1010. Yeah. They were just giving it which something. is something they've had differentiating factors in there before um, to differentiate. This is a lower tier product. Mm -hmm. And all they said it was a GT1030 with DDR4. And some of the manufacturers didn't specify it unless you read the box. And sometimes it wasn't even on the box. Yeah. So it was kind of a, a crap move. Um, and uh, and I've, I've actually got a, a, a GTX 1050 3 gig card here for review, um, which is kind of the same thing. Yeah. It's a same, three, same, it's it's a three, three gig, gig card, but it has more CUDA cores. Less RAM, more cores. Uh, less RAM than a 1050 Ti, mm -hmm. more CUDA cores than a 1050. More CUDA mm. cores, more RAM. Okay. So it's like this weird middle ground between right. the two. And it's still a 1050, but it's not a 1050 Ti because it doesn't have four gigs. It's has the same middle. Ha, has the same memory bus as, yeah, as the 1050, 1050 Ti. Yeah. And has actually the same 768 CUDA right. cores. So it's going to be an interesting benchmark. Um, I, I think it actually is going to present some are, value. Are you, are you going to do it between the other 1050s? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll slot all it right the, between them. I'll, I'm going to benchmark it between the three. Um, so I I think it's going to be an interesting benchmark, and I think it could be an interesting value proposition. Yeah, it could be. As irritated as I am with NVIDIA about the naming scheme. Well, I mean, most average consumers are looking for price to performance. Right. That's that's the that's the main line. That and they are, but why confuse the name? Market, and that's my and that's my point. Yeah. And that's my point because it's a 1050 mm -hmm. with 768 CUDA cores. So you go, oh, cool, I'm getting a little bonus, but it's only got three gigs of, of video memory Real versus memory, yeah. the four of the TI. Why not call it a 1050 TI three gig? Mm -hmm. That way your CUDA core count is, is same, consistent. Yeah, makes sense. And and you just differentiate on the memory because right. that's an easy thing to draw. Yeah. Um, but eh, that's why I'm not in marketing. I'm sure there's a reason. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, AMD released a. RX 580 2048 SP is, I believe, SP, the official, yeah, the official name, name of it. Yeah, they put um, in quotes right here. And, and this is a 2048 stream processors. 
Now, if you don't know what a stream processor is, it's very similar to NVIDIA's compute units or mm -hmm. RT units or whatever the, not RT units, mm -hmm. that's ray tracing cores. Um, but uh, very similar to NVIDIA's, uh, gosh, TU. Yeah, yeah, uh, their TU count. Um, so basically it, it's their, their packages of, of compute units. Um, they call them stream processors. Yeah. Uh, so if you're not familiar with AMD stack, I'll, I'll bring you up to date. So the RX 580 comes with either four or eight gigs of GDDR5 mm -hmm. yeah. and 2,304 stream processors. The RX 570 comes with either four or eight gigs of GDDR5 mm -hmm. and 2,048 stream processors. Yeah. Now they're confusing their muddy in the waters. Well, this just in China, then. just in China, <laughs> just in China, just in China. For now, for now, it's a global economy. I could probably buy one. Probably, I could probably you buy could one. Probably get one. Um, so, AMD has released an RX 570 as an RX 580 2048 SP. Yeah. Just slightly, when you're doing everything right, slightly higher clock speed, slightly higher clock speed than the RX 570, but it's it's an RX 570 OC. Yeah. Basically. I don't think it's anything yeah. beyond the RX 570 OCs that have been coming out from yeah. like XFX Probably and Sapphire, much. the Pulse or anything like that. Uh, Power Color, you know, you go down the list of, of AMD partners. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's any different than those. No, it doesn't look too much. And it's, it's definitely not an RX 580 if it has 2040 Extreme processors. Yep. So, AMD, care to comment? Yeah, it's a little weird. <laughs> what the crap this is? Like that. Uh, yeah, just a, a curious one here. So how is it? Um, I'm not super impressed with it. It's got an interesting nose on it. Yeah. I like mean, like it, it's you, fruity, but I can't you can, narrow down what you the fruit can is. Really, well, yeah. Have you ever had an ugly, <laughs> ugly or yuzu fruit? I've never had either. I personally. can't say that I have. So I really can't say. I mean, it, it just it's tastes interesting. It just tastes like a citrusy ale. Not even, not even super it's, hoppy. It's not an IPA. No, it's uh, not hoppy. They're, they're calling this a fruit IPA. I'm calling BS. Yeah. That, that's not an IPA. No, um, Oscar Blues aren't really known for their super hoppy beers. You know what? If I dig for it at the back end, I've got a little bit of a hop flavor. There's some, I think you're maybe confusing the bitterness because there's some bitterness in there and that could be just from the fruit. But not, not very hoppy. But very, lots of citrus, but not... No, know. as it settles, I'm getting just a little bit of hop. Yeah. Just, to, I mean, not yeah, too much. yeah, it, it really is an ale. It, 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 it just tastes like, it tastes like an ale with yeah. some citrus juice in it. Yep. Uh, Bendy Bendy asked earlier, EVGA, B-Stock worth it? Absolutely. They're great shipping, great customer service. Sometimes you can get deals where you can get free shipping. Uh, they will kind of jack you on shipping prices. So be careful about that. You go, oh, I can get this power supply for like 60 bucks yeah but it's 30 dollars shipping which puts it over retail cost yeah. of that power supply on amazon so yeah be careful of the shipping costs on there but yeah if you get a deal for free shipping or sometimes they have five and ten dollar shipping mm -hmm. days great bargains i've bought quite a few stuff on there um all right amd rumor news yes amd rumor news possibly for november Ooh, coming up yeah right, up, right around the corner new amd graphics cards Polaris based. Yeah. Well. <laughs> um, 12 nanometer. 12 nanometer. Yeah. Um, so some hope for, for some performance improvements. I think this is going to bump them up a tier, or maybe three quarters of a yeah. tier. Because we, we always go, oh, RX 580 or GTX 1060. Yeah. Or, or we go RX, you know, RX 570 or GTX 1050 Ti. I think this is going to bump up every card either a half a tier or a full tier. So we'll be talking RX 680 versus GTX 1070, um, where I think the 1070 will win, but the RX 680 will probably be in the conversation because we're not looking anything more than generational improvements, mm -hmm. if you're even getting that. I think we're going to see 10 to 15%, and, and that's what the, the headline says as well. Say, yeah, 10 to 15. 10 to 15% just from a die shrink and higher clock speeds. Yeah. Um, so if, if instead of clock clocking at the 1425 that the RX 580 does, and you're going up to 1670. Yeah. You know, 1700 megahertz. Um, that's a, a huge bump. Plus, you're going to get more power efficient with that, that die shrink. You could be looking at a very competitive card to the GTX 1070. Oh, yeah. And I think, that, you know, the, the coming out in November is obviously something they wanted to put out right before mm -hmm. Christmas right. and the whole Black Friday, which right. is 
a huge, huge market for electronics. Right. Um, so they, they had to put something out there. Mm -hmm. And this is what they're putting out. And I think it's a good move. Yeah, um, it's a good in, move. In, 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 in advance of their 7 nanometer mm -hmm. uh, Navi slash Vega 20 slash whatever mm -hmm. the crap they're going to be coming out with. I think it's a good move. Um, anytime there's more competition in a marketplace, especially oh, yeah. as NVIDIA is trying to sell off their Polaris cards, mm -hmm. or excuse me, their Pascal the cards, Pascal card, yeah. um, why not get a little bit more competitive with that yeah. and, and make NVIDIA slash their prices Even and, and undercut yeah. them? Because yeah. uh, all of a sudden, if your RX 680 is competitive with a 1070, but you're at $270 versus 400, guess who's going to sell their cards more? Yeah, I think I think we're going to see just some big, big price drops for the mm -hmm. holiday season and maybe for yep. early next year. Yep. I, I fully agree. So, and uh, and I, I've said before, I think the whole RTX conversation and and benchmark and release and the reason they're overpriced is really because Nvidia is completely overstocked on Pascal chips. Yeah, they want to. And so they price them high on purpose so they can liquidate their their old Pascal yeah. chips at full retail price while while AMD still has no competition. Although it's, they get fifty six sixty four and possibly RX six eighty. Mm -hmm. Because of that, there might be some RTX price cuts coming as well as some Pascal price cuts coming mm -hmm. because NVIDIA has to stay competitive. Yeah. And and that's something we haven't said in a long time. Yeah. Um, really since the the uh, R9 290 and the, and the, and the R9 Fury. That's, that's a, that's I mean, we're, we're talking four, almost five years yeah, ago. That's a long time ago. Um, that was the last time that, that AMD was really competitive with NVIDIA yeah. at, on the top tier of their cards. Mm -hmm. Um so, yeah, if if all of a sudden AMD can sneak in from the bottom and they're not going to compete with the 2080 or the 2080 Ti, yeah, but not, if they can compete top. with the 1080 and below and they, the 2070 yeah. and below, they're looking to, to compete with, with that. That's going to uh, that's going to undercut a Nvidia's bottom yeah, line. It really market, is not the top tier. Yep, especially going into the holiday season. Yeah. Yeah, Vega 20 might not happen for gaming. Yeah, uh, we've heard that. We've I've heard mixed reports both ways. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think. For compute, Vega 20 makes a lot of sense. Yeah. For gaming performance, I don't know if it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been pretty impressed with Vega as an architecture in some of the lower end platforms, especially the uh, the Hades Canyon uh, mm -hmm. with the Vega 24 uh, on yeah. board, getting GTX 1050 Ti level performance on an integrated chip that's 85 watts. Yeah. That has been just it's pretty good. An insanely good combo. Um, so I think the potential is there, but whether or not AMD wants to invest in it. Who um, knows? If there's a market for it. Yeah. And, and if there's a market for it. The other thing is um, console makers invest very heavily into AMD for the graphics, for mm -hmm. their onboard graphics, which is why Polaris is so heavily invested in. Because Polaris had $4 billion of Sony and Microsoft money behind yep. them, as well as yep. a, um, a little bit of Nintendo for the Wii development. Um, until... Uh, uh, Nintendo ended up going with NVIDIA Tegra X1 yeah, for, for, the, for, for the Switch. Yeah, for the Switch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Microsoft and Sony both invest very heavily into AMD graphics, and they determine what yeah. AMD's pipeline is going to be for a good chunk of their graphics. And, the, and, the, the PS, and that's been the, Polaris. The PS5 has also been officially right. officially been called to being worked on. Not, right. Not an official announcement or right. code name or anything like that. Exactly. But it's something that they're um, on. So, yeah, I, as much potential as I think Vega has... It's going to be difficult to see if there's actually going to bring a competitiveness to it. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I'm really impressed with, especially the low end things with Vega. And now that the the top end of Vega, the 56 and 64, have matured, I'm really impressed with those cards. Um, they're still power hungry. You're still talking right. 350 watts for a card yep. versus 225 watts for it's an overclock yeah, 1080. You got to get the bigger power supply. Um, those guys. Right. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're definitely power hungry, but there's definitely gains to be had there. Um, especially on a die shrink, you know, you go from 12 nanometer down to down to seven. That's gonna be a big performance boost right there. Vega may may still yet have a little comeuppance on Nvidia, so be interesting to see. All right, um, this one actually hit a friend of mine, and I have oh, a laptop really? on my desk uh, at work that I've been working that's, that's on been on working the side because of this, huh? And I didn't put two and two together when we posted this news article. And then now you did. And then all of a sudden I'm looking at it going, well, I've got this laptop that's blue screening. He was worried he lost all his files. He thinks it's something to do with the, the new Windows 10 update. He's is up it, to, he's is, up, it, is it an HP? He, he's oh, updated man. all the way. He, he, he bought an HP NV17 like four or five years ago with Windows 7 on it. Mm. And he's updated all the way from 7, all the way through every revision of Windows 10, had the 17.09, 18.03, that went just fine. 
and uh, he was trying to do something on his laptop, and he rebooted it, and he saw it had a uh, um, an, update. an update, and when it rebooted, it just blue screened on him. It wouldn't turn on or it would boot to a black screen or all these other weird mm-hmm. issues, and so he goes, "Oh no, are my files gone?" Or you know, because there was that whole whole issue as well. Yeah. Um, are my files gone? Is my hard drive bad? What's going on? Mm-hmm. And so I, I grabbed this hard drive and I plugged it in. I went, no, all your That's files fine, are man. there. Yeah. Everything's fine. What what the heck is the deal with this? So we decided to upgrade them to an SSD while we're at it. So we're just going to build them a new OS and, and just, get them yeah, working. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Anyway. Um, you know, 250 gig SSDs are so cheap. I mean, yeah. I think we picked one up for $65. Yeah, they're ridiculously um, cheap. Yeah, and, and that's all he needs. And he was doing upgrades before, right? Yeah. So, yeah, no, dude, yeah. clean clean Windows install is the way to yep. go. Exactly. So, yeah, clean Windows install uh, and, and SSD. But And then I'm looking at it going, wait, I have a HP laptop that's blue screening on me after an 1809 update. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Now, did you do the it sure is. Did you do the 1809 update? Um, I haven't yet... I don't think I have. I think I'm still on 1803 here. Okay. Uh, 1803. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, I did the 1809 update. It's yep. zero problems. Yep. And I'm yep. really, really digging the Explorer dark mode. Uh, that that is one thing I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Is yeah, I, especially when I'm working in here at night. Um, mm-hmm. My lighting in here when I don't have the studio lights on is actually fairly dark, and that's the way I like it. Yeah, it's it's, a, like it's it much easier on my eyes. Um, I've got this this monitor calibrated so when it's a little bit darker in this room, it's easier to see mm-hmm. and the colors are still accurate. Um, and uh, yeah, whenever I have to go file browser, it's like, ah! Yeah, I know. You're like, this. <laughs> Especially on a 43 inch display. What's really funny is I filmed a video a couple weeks ago and I had the uh, the Lions game on my screen over here. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, you'd see blue flashes in my glasses because that monitor is so <laughs> <Right. laughs> Like my whole face would change color tone yeah. <laughs> depending on what was on screen. So anyway, uh, Windows 10 1809 causing uh, literally Windows corruption on some HP devices. Yeah, they're saying it's it's got to do with driver incompatibility. Driver incompatibility on a lot yeah. of laptops and some desktops. And I believe this is this has to do with some of the HP update uh, wizards that yep. are installed on there. Yeah. Uh, there. There's some system hooks that HP has in there for different calls. And I think that is what's, what's corrupting this thing. Um, and uh, I, I tried to do some recovery options with, yeah. with it. It's not coming back. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't boot in safe mode. So whatever it is, it's pretty low level OS. Uh, and yeah, the only recovery option is to uh, try it again. Just wipe it. And just like the whole, sorry, 40,000 people who lost all their files in their, in their home yeah, directory. Yeah, that thing was, uh, yeah. Just like that. Um, Microsoft, this is what you get when you lay off your entire QA department. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when you and I are the beta testers. Yeah. You get whole files gone. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I, I had no problems with mine. Yep. And, and this whole Windows Insider program, it's a little bit DOA because I'm not going to run the Windows Insider program on a production machine. No. You, you have to have... You have to have I'm not going to run it on my of, video editing rig. You have to have a bunch of tension... But, uh, bench tests and right. stuff like that. Too. But then if you're not actively using it with software yeah. you use every day in use cases that you're using every day, you're not fully testing right. it. Right. And then that's the thing is like, there's not that many people that do that, that are really like mm-hmm. developing software for these new features that are coming out. Or there are, to test it. there are on the server side of things. There are people, uh, myself included, who run entire dev networks. Right. Um, you got to go check to see that, that this update's going to work. Right. You, you make whatever. sure it's not going to corrupt something with your active directory right. or, or your, or your DNS right. or, you know, you, you go through so your you checks have, and balances You have to have there. an isolated mm-hmm. replication of whatever you, you right. have going on to see if it doesn't screw anything up. Is Microsoft going open source? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 They're not. Microsoft recently open sourced DOS. <laughs> not even DOS 622, which I'm waiting for. Open source, maybe. But... Uh, yeah. Uh, little festering wounds. <laughs> yes. Uh, no. They, they recently open sourced DOS 2.0. Oh, you, really? You can go download the source code for DOS 2.0. DOS 2.0, yeah. Which is almost 35, 38 years old, something like that. Might even be 40 that's, years old. That's, it's old. Yeah. yeah 2.0. Yeah. yeah. It's very old. Yeah, because that, that was like founding days of Microsoft back yeah, in like I, 77, 78. I think, I think my, I remember. In my, fact, yeah, it's probably the 40 year anniversary of DOS 2.0. I, yeah, I think my dad still has a MS DOS box, like the retail box for 4.0. Um, I've got a 5.0. Okay. Uh, retail box. I'm pretty here. sure it was 4.0 that he yeah. still has. It's somewhere. I, I need to. Uh, my upper shelf is going to be a display only. You're going to have here. like you're going to have a museum. Yep. 
the ode to old PC. Mm -hmm. Yep. New office slowly but surely coming slowly together. Coming together. Yep. Yeah, I know your wife was was complaining a little bit about. How your old office space is still kind of you can't quite take over. It I'm yet. working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, I, there, there is so much to to running a YouTube channel that people don't understand. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Um, I've for quite some time I devoted almost 200 square feet of my house to the studio. Now I've got almost 370 square feet in this mm -hmm. new room. Um, I had to completely redesign the room, completely redesign my shelving. Yes. Move every, I, I literally gutted this room, rebuilt it from the ground up, moved everything in, and yeah. everything that came in here I came don't... in with a purpose. Uh, where this is where I don't you know, man, I helped you move stuff. Yeah. Just, ah, throw it in a box. Well, yeah, box. that was. <laughs> By the way, my old desk is still in this yeah. box here. In fact, there's my speakers yeah. that still aren't hooked up to my streaming PC. I was so. just here to make sure the liquor moved from downstairs to upstairs safely. Yeah. And then I left. I just yeah. wanted to make sure that yeah. happened. Yeah, and I'm missing three bottles, by the way. Uh, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, no. I don't know what happened. <laughs> oh, so yeah. If you have an HP, maybe avoid 1809 for a couple weeks. Yeah. Like just so. like if you have any important files that you wanted to download, maybe avoid 1809. Well, for a I weeks. mean, it's always just standard practice to do restore point and everything like that. And it's always good practice to backup. Backup too. and everything backup. Yeah. Not everyone all. backs up. I know. I mean, you don't need to back up your whole hard drive. You just need to back up like your documents and your the stuff that you find. Well, you say that. Um, there are a couple machines. I am going to run machine level backups of this machine mm -hmm. and probably my streaming box mm -hmm. when I get my new server built because mm -hmm. um, I have enough space for that. And I'm just going to do snapshots. So I'm going to keep like All right. three weeks worth of snapshots. Okay. Um, I'm not. I don't need to go back ad infinitum mm -hmm. uh, to, to roll back on files, but I do want to keep a rolling snapshot of that drive. So I'll devote 250 gigs for this one and probably have a terabyte for that one. Mm -hmm. um, that way if something borks or, oh no, my my elements or my elements, my Premiere install is, yeah. is corrupted or, oh no, all my templates are gone or you right. know, all my preset effects and things like that, I can roll back a couple of days and get those back. Get those back, yeah. Um, so that that's my plan for that. And that actually might be a tutorial coming out here soon for anyone who has a home server or followed my free NAS Your House series. There you go. Uh, so that's that's one tutorial I'm looking at. Is how to safely yeah, do no, in-home backups. Yeah, because that's that's an important important issue. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm also looking at backing up my home server to Google Drive. Um, I'm looking at buying unlimited space with Google Drive and, mm -hmm. and pumping those files up there um, for a true offsite backup. Now you can only upload so much per day, so you can only do so many local changes on your on your machine. Well, I mean, isn't there's a few backup schemes that do deltas, right? Yeah, they can just say there's yeah, they do, uh, and and that's what I'm looking for is differential backup. Yeah, I don't need to keep everything that's ever been on my server ever. What I need is what does my server look like today? Yeah, um, yeah, I, I'm not interested in. Oh no, I deleted this file because I keep fairly good organization of yeah. my things and and whatnot. So. Yeah, maybe both of those will end up being a tutorial. Uh, four terabyte WD uh, My Cloud for 150 ish. Uh, the eight terabyte WD My Cloud drives or the My Passport drives were down in the 140 range a couple of days really? ago. Really? That's yeah. not too bad. Four terabytes. Yeah, and, and basically what that is is a Western Digital Red with half the cache. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're good drives. They just failed some longevity test, but you put them in a RAID 1 and you're rocking and rolling. Yep. So um, I went with six terabyte HDST, which is uh, another division of Western Digital now after they mm -hmm. were bought out. Uh, but I went with the six terabyte helium filled drives <laughs> for, my, for my server. <laughs> helium filled. And, I, right. and I got six of them. So nice. Yeah. And I'm going to run on a ZFS two, So I'm going to have 24 terabytes of doubly redundant wow. storage. So I'm you so do, looking forward to the new file server do build. Do not have to worry about file yeah. corruption or yeah. drive failure. Yep. Plus, if I can get the Google Drive backup working oh, and, man. and whatnot, and so all of my stuff exists up there. Yes, it's going to take forever to pull it back down, but at least it'll be somewhere. Outside of a catastrophic event, you're yeah, solid. Exactly. So <laughs> you're almost Armageddon proof. Mm -hmm. You're going to be the one with Fallout. <laughs> Fallout yeah. Four comes to your terminal. Yeah, it's still working. Um, what's really funny is uh, someone asked me on our Patreon, how would I do petabyte project? Uh, oh, right. So, because I'm doing a, a very minor server rebuild at my house, and they said, "How would you do petabyte project for Linus?" 
And I said, well, first off, it would actually end up being a petabyte when I was done. <laughs> and secondly, it would cost about three times what Linus did because he didn't take into account backups when he built it. Right. <laughs> he didn't take into account redundancy or any... I mean, he's got redundancy built into it in, in a RAID. Right. But RAID is not backup. No. And the more drives you have, the more prone you are to failures. Mm-hmm. Um, they certainly wouldn't exist in the same server closet. No. And I certainly wouldn't put all one petabyte in a single pool. There'd yeah. be multiple pools spread out multiple locations for this is our editing pool. And this is our archive pool. Right. This is our this pool. And this is yeah. our that pool. You don't put all your eggs in one server basket. So Because you have a catastrophic failure. So Linus, if you need some server advice. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Not that you're not entertaining in that regard, but I... Um, yeah, uh, I- enterprise level is different than... Um, and, and I mean no offense by this, but screwing around level. And... Yeah. and uh, um, I mean, there, there's things that I do in my house that I would never do in an enterprise or production environment right. just because they work. And, uh, but and the it's... thing is, when you try to scale them up, there's a point at which you, scaling them up no longer makes sense or you're running adverse to the risk. Oh, yeah. Your, your risk starts outweighing yeah. how oh. you're doing things. You have to really yep. mitigate that Hell, risk. I run things in production I probably shouldn't with, oh. with shoestring and band-aids. <laughs> um, well, let's do it in production. Right. We'll do it live in but production. But it's one server and one service that only has to work and it only affects seven people. Yeah, right. we yeah, can. Whatever. If it crashes, I can rebuild it yeah. or I can yeah. fix it in the morning or yeah. things like that. So, yeah. Uh, rip LTT. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So... Anyway, uh, let's see what's next. Oh, what is next? Ooh, Kickstarter. Kickstarter news. Oh, yes. Uh, Six Cents, which yes. I followed heavily. Wow, all of a sudden their, their picture didn't load. That's a point. Let me go see if I can. Um, I think it's probably ad blocked. I guarantee it's probably. No, I'm refreshing the page, see what happens here. Yeah, it looks like. Ah! Turn it off. Unfortunately, it's through my DNS, through Oh, Pi-hole. so you really can't do it. Well, I can. I just have to you know, switch here, the VPN. Here. Here. Ta-da. Oh, okay. Switch your DNS. Uh, okay, now refresh. There we go. There we go. Yep, it was ad blocked. All right. So, six cents. Uh, did you ever see these guys when they came out? This I did not actually over five guys. years ago. Uh, go and scroll down so we can see the picture there. Um, so uh, <laughs> F twelve. You brought up the. I brought up the code. You're there not you working, go. Steve. What the heck? Go away. What in the world did you do? I don't know. Okay, F eleven. F eleven. There, there you go. go. Okay. You need me to drive? It was it was working just fine a second ago. Okay. All right. There we go. So. Uh, when the Oculus DK1 launched, yes. when the Kickstarter came out, and it was one of the shit's in my mouth. Uh, was one, sorry, that was gross. <laughs> was one of the most successful Kickstarters of all time um, at that time, raising like something like three and a half million dollars yeah. or something like that. Um, there was an instant need for in, for input devices yes. for for okay, we have the the tech that kind of works on our head. How do we actually achieve VR? Right. Um, there were two companies that dove in kind of with both feet and then both retracted just as quickly. Mm-hmm. Where one of them jumped in and, and went, wow, this water's really cold, and then jumped right the crap back out, and that's six cents. Six cents, yeah. Uh, and then there's another one that jumped in and went, wow, this water's really cold, and then slowly drowned. <laughs> and that was Razor. Yeah, yeah. Um, not that Razor floundered at all, but they didn't develop the product any further. Yeah. More they push their buddy into the pool and then let him drink. Um, so uh, the two products that came out of this were the Razer Hydra controllers, which I owned. Um, I, right. I had a set of those, and I think that was your first VR experience. Yes, was probably was. on yeah. on on my my DK one with uh, a couple of the the tech demos that I had, mm-hmm. including Half Life Two, which is still one of the best VR experiences I've ever had. Oh yeah, on on that setup, uh, and Six Sense, which Six Sense was a fledgling startup that promised um, basically what we have now in both the Vive and the Oculus Touch controllers, uh, which is six degree of freedom, one-to-one movement, uh, haptic feedback, joysticks, buttons, a, a real feel for what you're getting right. in the game. Yeah. 
Um, and it had this whole charging dock and it worked um, with a, a very rudimentary camera system it that was very, very simple to set up. Yeah. And, and it worked for, oh, we got a donation. Sorry, I missed that. We did. Uh, oh, wow. Rhett, one dollar. Rhett. Rhett. <laughs> That's right. Wait, Rhett, you he, should be he's here supposed right to now. Be right here. I'm taking your place. What that's, are you doing that, on chat? That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not complaining. So I'm Rhett has here. other commitments for the for the next uh, month or so. Yeah. Um, he's going on vacation. He's got a couple other things. He's he's got other other people he hangs out with that he likes more than me. Apparently. Um. So uh, anyway, Steve's going to be filling in for Rhett. And in fact, I believe you're on three out of the next four weeks. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm on. I'm on next week also. Yeah, you're and on then, next week, and, and then, then it's you're on John for two weeks. J oh, John for two weeks. Yeah. Okay. No, I thought you were on November eighth. I'll have to check that. Uh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, I'll have to check that. Because because John because you swapped John for Halloween. Yeah, because I had I was, I'm going on vacation. Right. I'm leaving. Um, and I don't know if I altered after that. I might have to go back and look. I'll go back and look. Yeah. But anyway, okay. Rhett's out of the picture. Rhett, thank you, buddy. Thanks for the dollar. Um, so anyway, uh, Sixth Sense. Uh, it was this whole system that was looked fully fledged out and all they needed was manufacturing money, um, which is how a lot of Kickstarters work. They go, yeah. we already have the idea. Here's the prototypes. Here's them in production. Here's how they work. Here's them yep. actually working. Yep. We need your help. And at the time, it was one of the most, again, one of the most successful Kickstarters. Yep. It, it raised uh, two or three million dollars, two and a uh, half, something like that. 600,000. 600,000, yeah. So it was fairly successful. Yeah. Um, so 600,000 to six to 2,383 backers. Um, and they never shipped a product. Nope. Never went anywhere. <laughs> um, it's not that they pocketed the money. It's that they kept diving into further and further development and, and then they ran into manufacturing difficulties. Mm -hmm. And then by the time they had a product that was worth shipping, number one, they were almost out of money. So they couldn't fulfill all the Kickstarter backers anyway. And number two, the HTC Vive was already a retail product. Yeah. Um, so again, it took them three years to to further develop this product. And, and the, they said, we have a working product already. Yeah. We just, we, we've got supply chain lined up and we're just ready to roll on this mm -hmm. thing. Um, and then business happened as it often tends to do. And yeah, it uh, just never fleshed out. Never fleshed out. So anyway, uh, this month, Six Sense is finally starting to refund those Kickstarter backers. Uh, they're going to refund all of them in full, the six hundred thousand dollars to all two thousand three hundred eighty-three backers. You didn't back them, did you? I did not back no, them. No, I no. I thought about it. I had my money waiting, Ready? Yeah. and I went, you know what? I'm just going to wait because I've I, um I wanted something, and I got a Razer Hydra on a killer deal. Mm -hmm. Um, because the Razer Hydra came out and originally it was one hundred and fifty bucks, and I went, wow, one hundred fifty dollars for a controller, and I went, wait, I've spent that before. <laughs> I have a steel battalion controller at home. Yeah. <laughs> and that only plays one game. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in fact, it was... Oh, I think it's, my daughter. I, it, it's in my daughter's It's in my daughter's room. Oh, yeah, okay. it, it's there. It's it's wrecked now. It's it, no, it's, <laughs> it it's, in the, works? It, it's in the closet. Oh, okay. I okay. still have my Xbox original simply, simply. for steel battalion so yeah. I can play it. A, that was the while. greatest controller it was. scheme. It I was. Mean, when you want to control a mech, get that steel battalion mm. controller. Yes. Yeah. The, Amazing, yeah. amazing experience. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I, oh, I've spent that before. Might as well. Well, um, so I had an Oculus DK1, and this was right around the time the Oculus DK2 is when the Sixth Sense this was, was coming out. out. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and oh my gosh, I should really jump on that. Well, I, I got a, uh, I, I had backed the DK1 on Kickstarter and got a Kickstarter DK1 with the hard, hard shell case and everything else. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the money at the time for the DK2, so the DK2 had launched. And had been on uh, been shipping for a, a month or two, yep. and I went. You know what? I want a DK2. I want to see what the positional tracking is all about, and try some of these new experiences mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I want to try the one to one thing. So I want to try to. So I want to try to buy this on the cheap. So I got onto Craigslist, and I found a DK2 at three hundred dollars, which was oh wow, which was the Kickstarter was, price. price. He was yeah. selling it at the Kickstarter price. Yeah, and uh, so I emailed him, and he said he also had a Razer Hydra controller. And, uh, and so I emailed him and I'm emailing him and I'm emailing him and I'm calling him and I'm leaving him voicemails and he's not answering. Crap. Just like most people from Craigslist, and actually. Crap. Yeah. Uh, and he also lived way the heck out there. Uh, ben, he lived up in... Vancouver somewhere? Or? No, up in the Gorge. Oh, wow. So like yeah. how about Saint, uh, uh, Hood River? Or? Uh, not quite Hood River. What's just before that? Uh, the Dallas. He uh, lived in the Dallas. No, the Dallas is after Hood River. Oh, after, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah, he lived in the Dallas. Um, 
So, um, so I'm, I'm emailing Colin. I'm not hearing back. And I went, okay, well, I found another one on there and he wanted 375 mm -hmm. and he was in Beaverton. So he's a lot closer. And so I emailed him and, uh, uh, got an answer right away. And I said, tell you what, if I drive up tonight and by the way, I'd been emailing that last guy for like four days yeah. when I found this other one that was closer for just more money mm -hmm. and I went, screw it. I'm just going to go buy that one. So I emailed him and I said, can I come up and pick it up tonight? And would you take 350? Mm -hmm. And he goes, yes, I'll take that. And so, oh, there you okay, go. I'll meet I'm you in two hours. Yeah. And so we, we had an arrangement, went in the mall parking lot. While I'm waiting in the mall parking lot for this guy to show up, the guy from the Dallas calls me and says, hey, I'm sorry, I've been away from my phone. Um, yeah, I still have it for sale. It's $300. If you want, I also have the, the, the controller, controller yeah. thing for it. Uh, I'd throw that in for like 50 bucks. So I'm in the mall parking yeah. lot <laughs> waiting to spend 350 on just the DK2. And this guy emails me and says, yeah, price, I'll, you I'll, get sell, the controller I'll too. sell you a DK2 and the Razer Hydra. drive all the way out to the Dow. So I did both. Oh, you did both? You got so I bought the DK2 at, in Beaverton. Mm -hmm. I then went home and I agreed to meet the next guy at 10 the next morning. And then I drove up to the Dow's, uh -huh. like a two hour drive. Yeah, I know. That's a long drive. Um, and, and picked that up and the Razer Hydra and brought them both home. And so I'm like... Now I have two. <laughs> you got two of them. So I have two of them now. Yeah. Um, I you didn't try flipping one? I, 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 so I flipped one on eBay and I think uh, I got like $540 or something bad. like that's that. Good. So I, yeah, it almost paid for both yeah, of them. Yeah, that's good. So, and I had a Razor Hydra, which at the time was selling for like 350 bucks by itself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had a Razor Hydra. Um, and like I said, still some of the best experiences I had was playing Half-Life 2, standing up with oh, yeah. the DK2 with the Razor Hydra, um, where your ammo count was here and your health yes, was here. No, I, I and, and you could that. shoot yeah. all shoot around you. Yeah. You could take the shotguns and go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was good. Great it, it, was, it was great. And jumping onto the train for the first time mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. like, like I've done it a dozen times, like, wee, <laughs> doing it in VR and you're standing on the ledge and you're going, don't jump. And you have to go, okay. <laughs> Especially when the positional tracking wasn't that great. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that was a trip, and that was uh, that's an experience I'll never forget. It was just that first leap onto the train. Um, so anyway, six cents, giving money back to their backers yep. finally with no product. They didn't didn't deliver. Yep. And by the way, the six cents controller was something like four hundred dollars. Was it really? Yeah, it was expensive. Um, and speaking of failed Kickstarters, oh yeah, uh, one of the biggest blunders in Kickstarter history is mm -hmm. also one of the biggest ever. Uh, money makers in Kickstarter history. And it's also local too. Also local, and that's why I wanted to talk about it. And that's the the coolest cooler. The coolest. The cooler. coolest cooler. <laughs> um, so the reason I didn't have this as a story, but it's kind of a slow news week. I mean, it's nine twenty, and we're almost through our list. Yeah. Um. So the coolest cooler, Portland, Oregon company, Portland guy came up with the idea. Um. So they raised what was it, thirty million dollars? They yeah, it was like one of the big. I think it is still. It's still like biggest. one of the top three, I think. Yeah, thirteen million. The thirteen million. 60, 60, backers, and they did this in two thousand fourteen. So it's mm -hmm. been there for a long time. Uh, but apparently, I mean, this thing, I, I personally would never buy it, but it is pretty cool. They got all kinds of things like the built-in blender. It's got Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. Um, it's 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 a real high techy cooler. Yeah, it had a battery bank in it, so you yeah. can charge your phone. Yeah. You could do a whole bunch of things. Um, so anyway, uh, the cooler was originally what two hundred and thirty ish dollars. Yeah, something like something that. Like that. Uh, I I don't remember specifics, but it it was it was not cheap, but it wasn't like exorbitantly expensive. Yeah. Um. So the guy who designed it had a really great design. The problem was he was unfamiliar with manufacturing. Yeah. Um, had no idea chain. how how supply chains worked, how manufacturing yeah. worked, how working with remote designers and CAD yeah. artists and things like that yeah. worked. Um, and as of date, as of today, they've shipped only forty thousand of the sixty thousand Kickstarter backers. Mm -hmm. um, and they actually just said on their page a couple of days ago. Uh, this is from, I think, September 11th. So it's about it's a month ago. About a month ago, yeah. That they will not be shipping any coolers in quarter four yep. of 2018 because of increased tariff costs yep. and manufacturing difficulties. Yes. Um, so when the Kickstarter originally was funded to him at $13 million, Kickstarter took their million dollar cut or whatever it was. Um, and so he's left with, we'll just say $12 million. Well, his 60,000 backers 
it would have cost him more than $12 million to manufacture and ship those. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's his first problem is he didn't understand supply, demand, uh, economics of scale. Um, he just went, oh, I can make like a one-off cooler and I can have it yeah. delivered to my home. He was probably thinking that, you know, a couple hundred people right. were maybe interested in it. Right, exactly. But the thing is, when you set your price, you have to expect the e- economy of scale to catch up. Right. What's your full retail price going to be once you've ramped up production? Mm-hmm. Um, that can be higher, that can be lower. But if you go lower, maybe you'll gamble too low. I think what this was is he thought it was just going to be less money to manufacture. Right. Um, so, again, he's only shipped 40,000 out of 60,000 of the coolest coolers. From what I hear, they're not the greatest quality either. No. Uh, they're they're kind of junk. Um, I actually know one guy who has one. It, is it pretty junk? It's pretty junk. Yeah. I, I haven't seen it in person, but I've heard yeah. him talk about it. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's pretty junk. So, yep. And they're, they're not going to be shipping anything in quarter four because, well, prices went up 25%. Lamest cooler now. Yep. Yeah, it's no longer the coolest cooler. The lamest cooler. All right. How did you finish this, finish this beer? I know. Like, I'm, I'm like this, and you're like that. Yep. I know. I'm working on it. Well, I've been talking a lot tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, I mean, to be fair, this isn't the best beer. I mean, mm-hmm. it's okay. Yeah. It's just, eh. And it warmed up over the hour. This would be better cold. Definitely better cold. Um, With all the citrus flavors in there. Yeah. I mean, like I can taste them, but they're so muted. And as it warms up, I'm not even getting that hop flavor anymore. No, as it's been in the glass. So it's much just, for the exotic fruit. Um, it it's better than a domestic. It's better oh, yeah, than yeah, it's yeah. better than a Coors or a Miller oh, yeah. or Bush or anything like that. No, no. I mean, it's it's above way better average. than a Corona. It's above average. It's above it's not, average, but it's not blowing me away or anything like that. Two seven five. If I had to rate it on untapped, uh, I'd probably give it a three, just because it's got. Weird fruits in there. I'd go I two seven. Taste the citrusy. I go two seven five. I knock them off because I said IPA. This is not. An oh, IPA. you know what? I think you're right because it it says say yeah. IPA. If you advertise something, it's not. If you I, advertise flavors that are I not did, there, I, I did I'm say, knocking you down. I did. I did say that. That's that's how I did. And you're right. Yep. I I I'd get two seven five. Yep. Like I said, it, it's above average. It's a drinkable beer. It's mm-hmm. going to be better cold. It's not very good warm. Um, very, very aromatic. Surprising. Yeah. No. I mean, it's, you could you can really smell the citrus. Yeah. When you smell it, it, it smells like a freshly mm-hmm. peeled grapefruit or orange or something like that. Grapefruit guava, maybe. Yeah, something like that. S- some passion fruit, yeah. citrus. Yeah. Very tropical. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's okay, but it's not an IPA. It's not mm-hmm. a fruit IPA. I'm not chasing the fruit flavors. I'm not no. tasting really any hops, especially no. now that it's warm. Yeah. It's just okay. It just, yeah, it just tastes like an ale with some... A little citrus, bitter citrusiness. Add, yeah, a yeah. little, little bittering. Agent yeah, like the, like the pith or something like yeah. that is in there. Yeah, exactly. So, all right. Um, gaming, gaming news. news. Moving on to gaming news. Not as much going on with gaming news either. That's right. Uh, so Diablo three. Yep. Finally official coming to the Switch. Uh, yeah. It was kind of announced by Nintendo, and then Blizzard said, "Well, we're still working on it." Yeah, <laughs> Blizzard time. It'll be yeah. out for like the Switch Three. Yeah, uh, but no, uh, Diablo Three Eternal Collection. So that's all the DLC, all the expansions, mm-hmm. all the skins, every, everything your heart could ever desire of Diablo Three, mm-hmm. coming out officially for the Switch sometime. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wasn't it December? They were. Uh, they were supposed to say November second. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what do they say? Nintendo's no. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I think that was the official release yeah, date. Yeah, it was the originally. official release. Yeah. Whether or not it makes it, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, the new bundle set to release with the Nintendo Switch version of the game on November 2nd. It'll be available at a price of $3.59. So yes, this is official. No, yeah. November 2nd. Yeah. So we're getting a two-week announcement for Diablo 3 hitting the market. Yeah. So if you love Diablo 3 and want to take it on the road, then this might be... Quite honestly, I'll probably pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I have a Switch, and I'm looking for something else other than Zelda. Because I've... <laughs> That's I've, the only one you like playing on there? Um, Breath of the Wild is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, I don't have Super Mario Odyssey yet. I need to pick up Odyssey. That is fun. I really and like and that. I need to pick up Mario Kart. Th- those are the two that I need to get. But Mario Kart's fun with people, and I don't have a lot of friends outside of you guys that have a Switch, and yeah. I don't see you guys often enough to multiply. Multiple, yeah, yeah. So it's like I, I need to buy my wife a Switch, and, and the rest of my family needs to get one too so we can actually play the thing. Um, we do have the uh, the Mario meets uh, uh, Raving Ra- Rabbids. Raving Rabbids, yeah. Yeah, that one's actually really fun. The the turn based strategy game, mm-hmm. uh, surprisingly fun, and my wife really enjoys that one. So we we play that one quite a bit, and you can play that one with just the two Joy Cons. So. Oh, that's good. It's yeah, fun. I haven't, I haven't played that one, but. Yeah, that that one's enjoyable. Um, I think we also have the Crash Bandicoot trilogy because she's a big Crash fan. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but yeah, for for a. Yeah. 
a bigger game, number one, I need to pick up Rocket League because I think that's going to be a great experience on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I love playing Rocket League. And I, I just could not get into Rocket League. I, I liked it. I, I liked I mean, it. I'm not very good at it. Like, I, I, I think I'm above average. Yeah. Like, I'm 60th percentile. Okay. Where I can... That's still better than me. Yeah. I mean, I'm, like, just chasing the ball the whole time. Like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm... I'm lucky if I even... I'm, I'm doing more than chasing the ball. I actually yeah. have strategy with where I'm hitting it and yeah. how I'm hitting it and mm-hmm. setting up my own shots and setting up assists. And oh, so yeah. I, I, I do okay when I play online. I don't play very much, but I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and I don't suck at it. I, I, we'll say that. I don't suck at it. Ooh. Ice bag is leaking. Yeah, oh no. <laughs> on my unstained table or yeah. unfinished table. Uh, you can toss me that back. I'll just wrap it down a little bit. All right. I don't want to drip it all over the laptop. That'd be good. Corsair, your ice bag sucks. Yeah, come on, Corsair. <laughs> We're going to give your ice bag yeah, oh, this table one and a half stars. This table has been so abused in the last couple of months. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I saw you have more coolant stain Yeah, all over here. That was that Fallout rebuild. Yeah. Or Fallout Dishonored. The Dishonored one, yeah. Rebuild. Yeah. Yeah, I stained my desk for you people. Yeah. <laughs> that blue stain ain't not coming out. Nope. No amount of sanding. Nope. Yeah. You can probably sand it, but it'll be like a divot. Yeah, exactly. Um, this was supposed to be a workbench top. Eventually, I'm probably going to buy another one of these countertops and mm. cut it down to size because these are different thickness tables yeah. as well, and that kind of bugs me. Because um, when I'm sitting here doing work, my, my arm's sometimes a little lower. Bumps it. it bumps it. Um, so I think I'm going to set up this as permanently as a workbench right. over in that corner. And then I'm going to buy another one of these countertops, cut it down to this length because I like this length. Right. Um, you don't want it that long. Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm also going to have it height adjustable so I can, like, stand and use the desk mm-hmm. if I want. Or, you know, change perspective in the room kind of thing. So, plans. Future plans. More money, more problems. So, Diablo 3 coming to Switch. Mm-hmm. Let's see. How's chat? Fun. People still play Diablo 3? A lot of people still play Diablo yeah, 3. Yeah, actually. I think, actually. I, I think um, they, cause, well, they do, this, they, they do the, the seasons. They do, like, the where there's different, different things that happen. Bad time to come in. I was probably sticking my ass in the camera. <laughs> Sorry about that. And for you ladies, you're welcome. Uh, let's see. Uh, I could have at least given uh, the ice bag RGB. <laughs> it is a Corsair product. <laughs> um, let's see. Permanent cup coaster. Yeah, pretty much. I'll just there you go. There it goes. stand there. Yeah, that's going to warp. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, it's too warp. Yep. <laughs> you were the jokes. You haven't been a dad for as long as I have either. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, moving right along. Uh, so this one was kind of interesting. Yeah. They're, they're taking this up to the next level. Yeah. Um, I, I'm interested to hear your take because we haven't talked about this one at no, all. No, we haven't. Uh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, so in the land down under, down in Australia, um, Australian police have, uh, or Australian courts have granted Rockstar Games and its parent company, Take Two Interactive, to search two properties in Melbourne, Australia for evidence related to a cheat known as Infamous. Yeah. Now, for those who don't know what this cheat is, this is a cheat that the developers of Infamous sold for $40 a person. I think it's $40 a month. Actually. Or $40 a month, excuse yes, me. it's $40 a month. Wow. No wonder Rockstar's pissed. Yes, I know. Um, so, uh, might be showing my hand too early here. Yeah. Uh, $40 a month to basically cheat at GTA Online. Yes. It, it was uh, a, a series of hacks and glitch exploitation and tra- uh, trainers and money yeah, glitches. trainers and invulnerability. Spawn any money. item. Yeah. All, all, yeah. The, all the cheating whores that you see that get yeah. on to GTA, yeah. they're, they're using this or they're using a variant of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm using the same a similar technique where these people in my opinion crossed the line is when they started selling this exploit yeah um because then you jump the line from being an ass which these right. people are asses right. uh to i know everyone's gonna hate me taking money out of rockstar's pocket rockstar monetizes gta online they own the property they, they own the servers cards. they they sell shark cards they sold the original property yeah. they own the ip yeah. Uh, it is their property and their storefront. Mm-hmm. If you are literally exploiting that to give people things for free, you are taking money out of Rockstar's pocket. Yes, and they're going to be pissed about it. And they're going to be pissed about yeah. it. It is, uh, for, for 
the number of people who hate shark cards, myself included, I, I don't, hate. Yeah, I don't care about them. I, I don't care. That's why I don't play GTA Online. Yeah. Is because I won't buy into an environment like that. I, yeah. I won't support it, uh, and I won't play it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to buy Red Dead Redemption 2, but I will not spend a dime more than retail costs. Yes. Uh, I, I won't play Red Dead Online. Um, and I think there's Which single you player... Know, you know it's going to be a big component of it. Right. I mean, it's, this is a big component right. of GTA 5. But, it's a big moneymaker for Rockstar. And, so and, they're going to do the same thing with Red Dead. And, and the problem is, I know that the single player experience is going to suffer because of the online experience. Because... GTA 5 was supposed to have stories just like yeah, GTA Yeah, they were supposed 4 to have was. GTA 4 had two expansion packs. Right. And they said that GTA And those 5 were was amazing to. stories. Yeah. And there was those were supposed to come out for GTA 5, explore other characters, explore other other realms. Hey, yeah. maybe we'll go to uh to North Dakota or wherever the heck it No, I think GTA 4 they stayed in in uh Yeah, GTA uh, 4 stayed there. Stayed there, but they had like different like you were the, the biker game. Yeah, it was Battle Tony Balladay, and the Lost in the Lost Damned. Yeah. Um and those were both great because they told a completely different story with completely different characters. Um versus GTA 5, you got the three characters that were in the game, but once the single player was over, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm just a millionaire uh walking around the streets yeah. causing havoc. Yeah. Um so they were supposed to expand and they didn't because the GTA Online component took off and that's where they're making their money. So yeah. that's where their development team goes. Yeah. And RDR2 is going to be the same exact thing. And to be fair, they did a lot of new stuff there. I mean, if you ever played the online, they have oh, yeah. some weird stuff that yeah. you could go do on there now. Yes, they do. <laughs> I, I wish they would at least bring the, the items to single player so I yeah. could play yeah. hover bikes yeah. and things like that. Because right. who doesn't want to do that? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And it's crap that they're monetizing it on a monthly basis. Yeah, it, it really is. So it's their money maker. Yep. So this is, I mean, and this is this is why I feel they went so heavy handed onto these yes. people because you're right, they were literally taking money out of their GTA pocket. Online is a billion dollar industry by itself. Yeah. Yeah. Like like pe- people go, oh, they're just taking their money. No, you're giving them their money. You're giving them your money, yeah. and you're giving it hand over foot. And Rockstar knows that. Yeah. And and for as much crap as EA gets for stuff like this, Rockstar is just as guilty here. Now, Rockstar puts out a better product. Yes. And I think that's why they're getting away with it. If EA actually put the time into development and put out good quality games instead of the same BS, FIFA, and Madden, and, and oh, NBA yeah. live oh, yeah. games every year, oh, yeah. then maybe this might work. Um, you know, Battlefront 2 comes out, and all of a sudden you can buy 30 different skins for Vader, yeah. but Battlefront 2 is actually a good game. Maybe I'll buy it. No, it's not. It wasn't a good game. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Well, it wasn't a good game because the whole mechanic of it was based on pay to win. And, that, win, and that's yeah. where it was. That's where it was. Um, versus GTA V, it's pretty much cosmetics. Yeah. It's cosmetics and, and status. So so you're buying the condos well, and, you, and the yeah, yachts. You, you and you the, could, yeah, you could buy faster cars and condos and all kinds of stuff like that. But yeah, but it was still a pretty even yeah, playing field. It's still where, pretty even playing field. Where yeah. the entry level guy can still spawn a rocket launcher and blow you up from halfway across yeah, the map. Yeah, it yeah. was still an even playing field regardless of whether you had a slow car or a fast car. Right. Yeah. And it was still fun. Yeah, and whereas if you ever tried to play Battlefront 2 online against a Vader and you were just oh, a yeah. stormtrooper trying to grind your way through, yeah, you'll make it if you play the game for 70 flipping years. Yeah, I think because like when it first when when uh, it first got released, there was somebody who had spent like I don't know a couple hundred bucks and upgraded mm-hmm. his Vader and was just decimating everybody. Yeah, he yeah, the videos like, that came out, and and he wasn't even good at the game. Yeah, he, he was, was just going. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was just like wiping wiping the floor with everybody. Yep, and 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 at that point, it's not a game, and that's pay to win. That's a that's an unfair advantage against other players who haven't yeah. paid the money. Yeah, and and I think that's where Rockstar gets away with this. Is it's still an even playing field, even if your specs are slightly higher. Yeah, I think a lot of places that 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 do have the the paid content and stuff like that try to help mm-hmm. and keep it cosmetic, so it's not pay to win. Yeah, and and I don't mind that. I don't mind buying hats in Team Fortress Two, and yeah. I don't mind buying this and that for for things that that I enjoy. I've I've been guilty of that a time or two, but when it's simply a pay-to-win mechanic, that's a problem. Yeah. Um, and and when it's so much money involved uh, versus the grinding time involved, yeah. I won't do it. Yeah. Um, time is money, and I'd rather keep both. Yeah. No, I know exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing with the like, the, the the XP booster packs and stuff like that. Yeah. Kind of like. Yeah. Yep. Uh, off topic question, but is the Ryzen 2600 for 149 the best value of all time? I'd probably say yes. The Ryzen 2600 is one hell of a CPU, especially at 149. It's a great deal at 180. 
Yeah. Uh, let alone a great deal at 220. Um, I think it was on a... Was it an Amazon sale? Uh, look up this case, Sexy AF, Leap of 502. I've seen that one in white. And I've seen it in person in white. And it, it is a damn sexy case. Uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey has a paid XP boost. And, and again, yes. I will never pay for something in single player. Yeah, I, I will, And I won't even play single player games that do that. I've heard Assassin's Creed Odyssey is has got the, um, the Rotten Tomato Syndrome. Yeah. Where... The reviewers are saying, oh, this is great, but then the actual people who play it say, it's not really. Mm -hmm. It's not that great. <clears throat> yeah. So you get this dichotomy from the reviewers who say it's awesome, and then the actual people who yep. play it say it's not. Dumb troll is dumb. Who's trolling? Let me know. Makes me feel bad for getting a 2700X for 275. You still get two extra cores, four extra threads. Um... It is a more powerful CPU, and it's probably going to be better silicon, which means you probably get some better overclocks, if that's something that concerns you. It's it's um, Newegg that's got the deal. Oh, nice. Yeah. Newegg, Ryzen 2600 149. Get that. Yeah, that's good. That's a great price. Yeah. Uh, let's see. This one should be near and dear to your heart. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like this game quite a bit. Oh, so do I. I love the yeah, game. Yeah, this is great. And I'm specifically not playing it for this reason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because I'm well, trying to legitimately get that achievement. <laughs> and actually, when this... Uh, okay, we, we should talk about The it. Stanley Parable. Yes, the Stanley Parable is... You are Stanley. Yeah, it's a great game. And it's great not... Great game. It's, it's just a walk, walking simulator, basically. Is yeah, it is. is. It is so cleverly written. Yeah. And, it, and it makes you think. And, it make, and, and it's funny. And the humor is... Um, taking advantage of game mechanics to its own advantage. Right, exactly. And, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see that door there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there's a door there. Yeah, it is. It is. Or you well can just ignore. Or well you can just ignore what I'm saying and walk your way through. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it narrates how you walk through it and everything. It's, yep. it's a very, very, very well done game. Very funny. Highly recommend. It's pretty cheap, too. It's like, like five bucks or something. I think it was 10. 10. Okay. You yeah, can so pick it up on sale for like ridiculous things. Yeah, so, so it's an inexpensive game. Um, but definitely worth playing. Yeah. But, I will say. But like they have, they don't have that many achievements on there, right. but they have some absolutely ridiculous achievements. One of them is like play for the entirety of a Tuesday. Right. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> so here, um, I will uh, pull up the achievements now. Yeah. I'm just going to read these off. Um, what was the. Oh, you, just, you had them right there. No, I, I wanted the, the wiki. The Wikipedia, okay. Uh, I don't know if they have it on Wikipedia. Oh. There we go. Okay, so the achievements. You beat the game. Obey the narrator by going straight to the freedom ending. Don't disobey the narrator even once. Um, you can't jump, so you try to jump several times by pressing space. Yeah. You get an achievement for that. Welcome back. Quit the Stanley Parable, then reopen the game. Yeah, really hard. <laughs> oh, you're back. Uh, unachievable. Unachievable. Uh, trying to get this achievement by typing the, the uh, cheat underscore you, which is randomly give you an achievement. Yep. Uh, and the console will show an error message, hey, don't even try. The achievement is then randomly given to some players. Yeah. It's, it's just random. random. So some you players can't... will never get that yeah. achievement. Um, commitment. Play the Stanley Parable for the entirety, for the entire 24 hours of a Tuesday. Uh, you can cheat by messing with your computer's clock. Or can you? That, that's a little addendum that's yeah. down in the bottom yeah. here. Go outside. Here's this, the achievement this is the one of the we're day. Talking about, yeah. Uh, and I'll get back to that one. Speed run. Uh, so you have to glitch out a couple of things and beat the game in less than four minutes. Um, achievement by enabling and disabling the achievements option in the extra menu, you will be able to, to achieve one extra achievement. <laughs> <laughs> there's the eight 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 one. Right, and then there's type eight 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 into the boss's door yeah. several times. Uh, go outside. Do not play the game for five years. This is perhaps the biggest challenge the game presents, aside from obtaining the art ending, uh, playing by playing the baby and puppy game for four hours. Uh, for an easy trick, see the Stanley Parables website on resetting your clock five hours ahead and then relaunching the game. As the game came out on October 17th, 2013, today is, is the, the very, first day it is possible to get the achievement without resetting your game's clock. However, there's a developer's note in the comments of this wiki mm -hmm. that I didn't link to you. Oh, okay. The dev has actually said that people who cheat to get the achievement to get the go outside achievement will lose the achievement once it would have become able for them to have gotten it. Oh, okay. 
So they will retract the achievement uh, that, if that, you altered your computer's okay, clock to get the achievement. That actually makes sense because I went and looked on, because I'm like, okay, well, if this is the first day, I want to see how many people actually achievement. You can go to a, yeah. achievement stats. I think that stat went down. Was negative one. Yeah. Because <laughs> like people couldn't, they, they had to take it away. Yep. Yep. So, so yeah. And I'm betting it's going to be the same thing with the entirety of a Tuesday. They may time that one out eventually as All well. Right, so because yeah. I can start the game go into my computer's clock, set it forward to the next day, yeah. and, and then, then re rest restart the game. Yeah. Or, or, you know, let it, yeah, just tap let, out, let it refresh. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah, And and I'll get that achievement. I haven't cheated for any of the achievements. And, and so I'm specifically not playing Stanley Parable to see if I can actually Yeah, see, I, I want to <laughs> see where I'm at. I want to see my progression. Your progression on there? When was it last played? Last played 619 of 2015. So I've got two you years got, to go. Got two years to go, yeah. yeah. See, I, I made the mistake of like letting my nieces and nephews play oh, no. on my computer. Oh, no. And they're like, oh, I heard this game's good. <laughs> no! <laughs> I, like it. no. I think they did it last Four year. Four so years down the reset, drain. Reset my clock. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So yeah, Stanley Parable, you can finally get the achievement. Yep. Uh, Two dollars. Two dollars. Better than SCP Secret Laboratory. Oh, <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, we tried playing that. Did you? Uh, Saturday. So um, every weekend, the Discord patrons and myself and anybody who could uh, come along, we try to play some kind of game. And uh, we tried playing this one, and we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was saying, hey, it's great, it's great. And yeah. we're like, I don't know what's going on. All right. How many ending does that game have? I think it was upwards of 20. Yeah, they had quite a bit. Yeah. And you had to go through like three or four different of the same ending to get the next ending, yeah. and then you'd progress through. And some of them were just RNG. They're random. Um, so, yeah. Uh, oh, you added... Uh, I added one more. Sean, Sean Bean uh, dies oh, yeah. again. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the the if anybody knows uh, Sean Bean, the actor, yeah, uh, most probably well known for being Eddard Stark. Let me just stop that. Oh. Oh, crap. There you go. There we go. Anyway, he he's like well known for being killed off in just about every yeah. single movie he's in. Uh, Lord, of the Rings, Lord of the Rings. Just there's tons of movies. He, he survived. Dies. He survived The Martian. Oh, that's right. He did. He, he got there. fired. Yeah. yeah he, <laughs> he lost his job. Well, I mean, but he was on the ground. So, yeah. I mean, so it's kind of... Yeah. I don't think anybody died on The Martian, though. Nope. No one died on The Martian. Second, so he was... But, but the majority of his movies, he tends to die. Yep. So apparently for Hitman 2, he's the very first exclusive or uh, elusive target, I guess, <laughs> is what it is. So you basically get to go kill <laughs> Sean Bean over and over and over again. Nice. To your heart's content. Hopefully nice. they're gonna. Hopefully they're gonna incorporate some of his uh, more memorable deaths in his movies. I hope they do. Yeah. Like three or four arrows. In yeah, his right chest. there. Beheadings, you know, that <laughs> yeah. type of thing. That would be good. I think, yeah, I think. I think it was set on fire in a in a movie too. Yeah, I, I believe so. That. You know, now you got me curious. The many, the many deaths, deaths of Sean Bean. Bean. Uh, rest in peace, Sean Bean. 1959 to 86, 89, 90, 94, 91, <laughs> 92, 95, 98, 2000, 2001. Um, what do we say to the god of death? Take Sean Bean instead. instead. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, the Field, 1990. Patriot Games, 1992. Goldeneye, 1995. Oh, that's, that's right. He fell from the dam. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Shot. Equilibrium. Shot with the Equilibrium. Uh, Henry the Eighth. Yeah, I'm Henry the Eighth. I am. Uh, the Island, The, the Hitcher, Black, Black Death, Death yeah. Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones again. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that was it. And there's there's more than that. Yeah, but he dies in a lot of his movies. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So I think that was it. I think that's it. Um. What do you guys want to talk about? We got a couple got, minutes left. We got 10 minutes. Yeah. Rip Ned Stark. That's right. The North remembers. The North remembers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The next next season is supposed King to be uh, 2019. 
Yeah. Last season's coming out. Yeah. But they're doing a spin-off series, I think. Yeah. They're going to be doing like <coughs> the history of Westeros or something like that. Like yeah. Before all this stuff happened. Yep. History of the old world. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think George R.R. R. Martin did some short stories. Yeah. About that. I believe so. Uh, Sean Bing's role in Wasted was the best. What was Wasted? I don't think I saw it. Wasted. Maybe I did. I dude, forget. Dude dies more than Kenny. <laughs> when is the best budget Gaming Mouse video? Um, I've got a, quite a few s scheduled videos right now. Um, I'm working with a vendor partner on getting those mice assembled. Uh, they're going to be getting together their best selling mice. Um, it's not just a single vendor. Uh, like, oh, Corsair is sending over five of their mice, yeah. which is their best mouse. Uh, this is a, a vendor that's sending over a large collection of mice for me to, to, to look at. Um, I'm doing a keyboard review for them first, and once I finish that, they're going to be picking out the mice and sending those over to me. Sure. Um, the keyboard review is probably still a couple weeks out because um, I've got some other projects that kind of stacked up before that. Uh, but I'd say probably sometime, maybe the first week of December, I'll, I'll have that the, the mouse review ready. Mm -hmm. I, one of the advantages of being a one man YouTube crew is you feel like you're a little bit more nimble than, than a lot of the larger right, people, right. uh, who rebuilt the verge PC. No one. Yeah. And, and I like went, well, hell, I just reviewed that case a couple of months so ago. I've got right it on away. the shelf. Yeah, Let me just throw it together yeah. real quick and, and do a feature video on that build. Yeah. Whereas, uh, and, and I'm not saying, oh, I didn't like these, but a lot of the reaction videos to the verge video, ev everyone did the same video. Um, uh, I'll answer you, Regan, in just a minute. <laughs> um, but uh, this month, I've had so many hardware vendor contacts uh, that all of a sudden I have like 14 pending reviews. Oh, wow. You got a lot it's, in the it's chamber. It's insane. Um, and, and trying to balance those on a one-man production crew schedule yeah. is, is a little bit tricky. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Anyway, it, it is coming. It, it's on my radar, and it is going to be a good video because I am taking a third-party opinion on what are their best-selling mice and why are those the best-selling mice, mm -hmm. and, and I'll evaluate them as such. Uh, Regan, what computers did you guys use in college? Steve, I think we'll start with you. <laughs> I'm going to age myself <laughs> really bad. By the way, Steve's 10 years older than I am. Yeah. Well, let's see, because I... I I was poor in college, mm -hmm. and I didn't have too much money. And this was my first solo build, too. Yeah. I built it myself. It's a 486DX. Okay, yeah. My first PC build ever that I built myself from mm. parts that I had gone and bought was a 486DX, too. Yeah, yeah. So. And, that's, and that's what I what I. And yeah, that would have been about right. Yeah. Yeah. With the um, turbo button. Hit that turbo button. The computer I used in college was, uh, for the first couple of months, uh, I bought a laptop, and it was one of the first laptops that I had bought. Um, I did have a laptop in high school that I scrimped my pennies together and, and bought, um, and I had a desktop, but I had some weird problems with it, and I ended up not taking it to college with me, um, at least right off. Uh, I had a Compact Presario with a, I want to say it was an AMD based processor, mm -hmm. 850 megahertz mobile chip. Okay. That, was, that was my first laptop. Okay. Um, and then in college, I had bought a Dell Inspiron 1100. Um, and this was, a, I want to say it originally shipped with Windows Millennium. Oh my, okay. Yeah. Um, either that or my compact laptop, because I, I had a compact Presario laptop and I don't remember the, um, uh, the specs on it, mm -hmm. but that, that was one of my first laptops. Um, I then bought the, the, in, the, or the Dell Inspire 1100, which I still remember most of the specs. It was a Pentium 4M. Mm. Um, it was a 1.1 gigahertz. Yes. Had, yeah. had a full one gigabyte of Ram and <laughs> either shipped with windows millennium, possibly windows XP. Okay. Uh, cause this was around 2002. Yeah, that would be about right. 2002, 2003. ME. Yeah, because I think XP came out 2001. Yeah. It was one of the first P4s yeah, that okay. came out. So mm -hmm. it, it might have even been the 1.6 P4 that was like the desktop 478 yeah. chip. Yeah. Uh, it it might have been that, uh, although I think it was a socket 479. So I'm, I'm guessing it was the Pentium 4M before they added the M Monkey or for the low, for the low volt. Um, 
but uh, had a full one gig of RAM. It did have an ATI 3D Rage 16 megabyte graphics card. Oh yeah, <laughs> 16 megabytes. 16 megabytes. All right. Um, and it had a four by three 1024 768. Uh, nice. resolution screen not ips but it was active matrix at least so it wasn't a passive screen okay you had to you had to look for that back then oh yeah that was that was some sketchy stuff back then um yeah that was my uh that would have been like, the gist of my that college been AG, agb it would have been agb right uh not, agp AG, yeah agp yeah yeah advanced graphics port yeah exactly yep um so yeah had a uh an inspire on 1100 laptop uh, shortly after that, I rebuilt another desktop. I, it was based on a Celeron 300. Mm -hmm. um, I believe I built that machine in 2004. I had a couple of different machines. I know I had an Athlon XP in there. Um, I believe that's the machine I took for college, and that was one of the first one gigahertz machines, but my Dell laptop was faster than that because at the time, technology was progressing so quickly. Oh, yeah. A laptop outpaced a desktop within 12 months. Yeah. It was absolutely insane. Uh, from... 99 to about 2005 yeah um where if your desktop was more than 12 months old you're out of date yeah that was the time when just people would the, the whole joke came out where it's like if you bought the top of the line right a week later you'd be behind the curve yeah you know? you're like yeah stuff was cranking out your very laptop, fast your laptop is a month old well that's great if you could use a nice heavy paperweight <laughs> Right. My new computer's got the clocks, it rocks, but it was obsolete uh, did you, did before I opened the, the box. The external Wi-Fi card. Probably that was before. I Wi-Fi. did have an external Wi-Fi card. I had a USB 1.1 Wi-Fi card that worked on 802.11b. That was my first Wi-Fi card. On a, on a, on a USB, huh? Yep. I thought that, um, that laptop back then would have had the... Uh, <coughs> uh, PCM PCMCIA CIA yeah, Type 2. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the cards you stuck on the side. Uh, we had... <laughs> No, you're right. I think um, you're today. right. No, I'm I'm thinking of our wireless access point because uh, we had we had a cable modem and I think we got a three megabit per second yeah. uh, broadband speed um, with like a 320k upload something mm -hmm. like that. Um, we had an 802.11b access point that was a Netgear that was like this flat little disc about like that. Yeah, two antennas yeah, that antennas came, up. came up. Yep. And it was kind of that blue gray uh, yeah. that was real popular. Yeah, I had that. The, I had one of those the two, next yeah. color computers. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was about like that. Um, and the laptop at the time was a, it was another HP, but it was the HP Pavilion. Mm -hmm. it, so it was their business line of laptops. Right. And it was a 475 megahertz mobile chip. I think it was the Pentium 3 Mobile 475. Yep. Had an eight megabyte graphics card. Had a DVD ROM inside, so you could watch movies yes. on it. Yes, yeah, I remember that. Um, and that laptop had one USB 1.1 port. Um, had a PCMCIA Type 2 expansion port, which mm -hmm. is where we put the the Wi-Fi card. Mm -hmm. And so when you wanted to use Wi-Fi, it had an antenna that stuck out from the laptop about that far as like a, this little flat wafer disc. Oh, because so. I seen the one that had the little nub, and then you would screw the antenna on. I didn't have the those. nub. I do down in my garage. I'll have to show you. I have a cellular card. Oh yeah, okay. The the yeah. card. I had I had I had a GSM uh, card from Singular. Yes. Uh, that I used on my Dell and Inspiron. Yes. I, yeah. We had, uh, we, had those, we had those at work too. The air cards. Yeah. Community college Wi-Fi. Yeah. Screw yeah, that. Exactly. I've got my own internet yeah. with blackjack and hookers. <laughs> yep. So. It's all about the Pentiums, baby. I know the whole thing. Don't make me do it. Yeah. I won't do it here. I haven't had nearly enough liquor for that. <laughs> <clears throat> they said be mowing, my friend. Oh, so it did have an external Wi Fi card. Okay. Yes, I thought. They're all thinking I'm so wide and nerdy. Wide and nerdy. <laughs> How can you date things by the primary color that are used for the equipment? <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually can well, yeah. carbon date based on colors. Oh, well, didn't they have uh, there was a, that Linus video where he had all that retro, yeah, retro rebuild. Yeah, he did the retro rebuild. Um, yeah, uh, what's what's funny is everyone associates gr with the beige, beige with the, the 90s beige, and early 2000s. Yes, the there was a blue gray from like 98 to, to yes, 01. Yes, um, it, it's it when, was it's, the first time they said you, we don't have to make everything. <laughs> if, if, if you remember the HP desktops, the, the pre-built desktops that you'd go to Best Buy or Circuit yeah. City or Walmart or whatever to buy, that HP blue color, mm -hmm. that was on everything for a yeah. while. Um, and it was only like for those e three years and then all of a sudden beige came back. E-Machines yeah. was more black and silver. That's true, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There were a lot of black and silver uh, cases. 
um, using ECS motherboards yeah. and you know cheaping out on, on cheap, 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 components. cheap components. Good processors, cheap, cheap components. components. Oh yeah. Yep. Any thoughts on using a budget eGPU dock? Um, driver compatibility, holy, holy driver compatibility, Batman. Yeah. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It doesn't depend on the dock and it doesn't depend on the laptop. It depends on both. So sometimes you can get lucky, sometimes you can't. So it's for a market that's existed for about two years over Thunderbolt 2 and now Thunderbolt 3, it is still the wild, wild west mm. for that. Uh, what info do you have regarding the YouTube outage yesterday? Oh, I have the inside scoop. Do you? Yeah. One of the, you're going to look at those big server farms at, at, uh, at Google. Right. Uh, really what it is, is my beef with awesome hardware. And I decided to DDoS them during their live show. Uh, so, uh, Paul, Kyle, I, the cork didn't work. I was trying to take out Kyle to, to usurp that program no. and, and become Paul's right hand man. And that just didn't work. So I, I tried some more drastic means of taking down YouTube globally. Um, <laughs> no, it's, they were, they were riding the scooters around in the server farm and yeah. were drinking and crashed. And so, it, so, someone crashed happened. their hoverboard into the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tragic accident. Yeah. Um, really, I have no more information than you do. All I know is YouTube was down globally for, for about an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, and everybody noticed. Yeah, and everyone noticed. Yeah. What's funny is go look up uh, the usage statistics for Vimeo and Justin TV. Oh, yeah. Boom! <laughs> Huge <laughs> spike. Yeah. Meteoric mean, spike. They have never seen that much traffic yeah. before. Like all never. Time. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was crazy. Um, so yeah, that's all the information I have. Um, I will say a couple of my videos I did notice took a hit and did not recover because mm -hmm. um, I had just posted the EK Water Blocks video that morning. Right. And normally I'll get a second wind about six hours in. Well, about six hours later, YouTube crashed. crashed. And yeah. instead of getting a little second wind and getting a couple hundred views per yeah. hour, all of a sudden I'm down in the 40s and that video will just never recover. Oh, yeah. So um, not that I expected a lot of views out of that video. I think it's performing... It's performing under what I thought it would for a brand new product release, especially something mm -hmm. prestigious as you, as EK. And I was one of the first videos out. Um, it's just but not, it's already old hat now. Yeah, it's yeah. The day cycle already happened. Um, the way YouTube works with the analytics is you it's post really you weird. post you post your video and you get about a thousand for for my level of channel I get about a thousand notifications mm -hmm. is, is what I anticipate happening. So. Within six hours, I'll get a thousand views on most of my videos if my Notify squad even cares about the video. Remotely, anecdotally, whatever, they'll click on it. Yeah. So I'll get a thousand views usually within about six hours. If they have good interaction with that video, I'll see a second win where YouTube starts recommending that video. And it mm -hmm. happens within that four to six hour window, which is why I say I have to post between 8 a.m. and 8 and 12 p.m. on like a Tuesday or a Friday. Yeah. Um, because that's when I'm most likely to get a second wind on a video. Um, and if you can catch that second wind, YouTube will recommend that video above all else for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, that's what happened with my Verge video. That's what happened with quite a few others is I'll see a thousand spike within the first six hours and it, and it does the same trend. Every single video does the same exact thing. It's that seventh hour that if it does this again, YouTube's recommending it. It's a good video. Yeah. We're all good. Everybody goes away. Yeah. yeah. So it's really frustrating to play the game. I hate having to play the game. I'm trying not to do the, the Linus Tech Tip style uh, thumbnails. I'm probably going to start doing it, though, because it gets clicks. And I need clicks to grow. It's, it's my a little, livelihood. A little fancy graphic with the... The, the clickbaity titles the click and the, yeah. the neon backgrounds. Yeah, and the, oh. yeah the flashing. The, the Linus face. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I can't make a good Linus face. Um, People in the U.S. calling 911 because YouTube was down. Yes, yeah. I did, I did yeah. hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Philadelphia Police Department had to put out a statement. Yeah. yeah, our YouTube is down too. No, don't call 911. We can't fix it either. Yeah, the police are going to... Yeah. I can come by and shoot your computer for you. That's right. going to help. I have that exact HP blue monitor you're talking about. It, see, it, yeah. it, it's, it's that blue and blue gray. Mm -hmm. There were two different shades yeah, of no, it. It was know, a two-tone. Yep. Yeah. I know which one you're talking But about. that's 98 through 2001. And HP... It lasted longer on the HPs, but a lot of companies were doing it. Netgear it was doing yeah, that for a while. Yeah. Yep. Netgear a, a, lot of, a lot of peripheral companies were doing that. So a lot of keyboards and mice from that mm -hmm. era are that color. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what started was Next, was Next Computers. They, the, the, they put the, the Steve computer. Jobs, yes, because they, right, yeah. they built that color first. Mm -hmm. And so all the other computers were trying to emulate think, that case. Yeah, I don't know if it came before. Silicon Graphics was also. Yeah, SGI color. was also yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. That's right. Yep. 
Uh, 2005 and beyond is just black and silver. No, we've gone through some color changes. No, they, I, I think I think around that time is is when case manufacturers started to realize that yeah, there's a there's demand for nice looking cases. Right, exactly. And they, they more started, than just beige boxes. Yeah, they just started um, coming into see, all kinds of things. Back going through about 2007 2008, bold. Uh, component design was in yeah. uh your dfi land party motherboards yes your your over the top graphics on graphics cards mm -hmm. with like the ati chick and the mm -hmm. sapphire girl yeah, yeah, and oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the those grandiose sexified like ruby or something was her name yeah yeah the, 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 yeah, the sapphire girl sapphire. was ruby yeah um so yeah it was all about graphics and and bling inside mm -hmm. um like I said, those yellow land party boards, the yeah. the Asus neon, uh, <laughs> the, the 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 Hot Wheels and the Barbie <laughs> cases um, from HP, I think. Uh, Adam, five dollars. Did you know Sony was having problems before YouTube and uh, notice other sites having problems uh, into today? Do you think it might be connected? I I can't say. I don't know what the problem was. Um, I can pretty much guarantee. YouTube's problem was not a DDoS because we would have heard about some kind yeah, of Yeah, they would have said something, yeah. That they would have publicly stood against that. And I didn't see the the traffic globally to justify that either. And YouTube is, quite honestly, almost too big for a DDoS attack. Yeah. You might be able to take down some services. You're not taking down YouTube not with DDoS. Not all of YouTube, yeah. Um, honestly, average traffic is a DDoS to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And if they, if they sustain an average Tuesday, they're going to live through a DDoS yeah. attack. Um, so beige, yellow. Yeah. Th there was a time when I owned a beige case with a yellow DFI land party board mm -hmm. with an ATI 3870 red Sapphire graphics yeah, card yeah. with, uh, they had all those, with, all with those Ruby on the, or no, that was a, that was a 2400 XT yeah. is what I had back then. But still the, the same over the top yeah. graphics on the graphics card. My Ram was like neon colored from Corsair. Yes. Yeah. Um, there was Asus doing the pastel color tones at the time. I don't remember the pastels from Asus. They, they, uh, on their RAM slots in particular, they do like okay. yellow and pink offset pastels okay. on their RAM. Just on the sockets, on the dim sockets. Yeah, YouTube's public facing was fine. It was the back end that failed. And that, that was my analysis as well. Um, if you go to, there's a great uh, service um, that HP provides. Um, do you remember what it's called? It's the uh, see real time DDoS attacks. Oh yeah, no, I, I haven't. I NOS or something like that, NOSS okay. yeah. or something like that. Basically, it's a real time global visualization of DDoS attacks. Um, yeah, you could have to. You would have to knock up a couple of backgrounds. Norse, to take up excuse me, Norris. Okay. Norse yeah. attack map. Yep. And it takes a while to load, but, um, and unfortunately I won't be able to show it because I brought it up on this computer and on that one. But uh, <laughs> Norse, or map.norsecorp, N-O-R-S-E-C-O-R-P.com. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can watch DDoS attacks in real time. See what country they're coming from, what country they're going to, what server farms they're hitting, what IP addresses originating and attacking. Um, and uh, what's funny is you can see like China throwing waves at like Microsoft throughout the day. Um, and Microsoft blocking all of them. You would have to knock out a couple backbones to take out Google or YouTube in the attack. Yeah, but but Google is so redundant, it wouldn't have been a global outage. It would have been a regional outage. So, How old do you think this case is from what you're saying? From the looks of that case, that's going to be about a 2005 to 2008 vintage. Uh, maybe even 2010. That's, I know that case. They cranked out a ton of those I know cases. that case. That's an Apiva. Yeah. Uh, Apiva also, uh, who else made that case? They, they made all, I mean, I think there was one uh, manufacturer that they made. Raid Max of... might've made that case I, as well. I can't remember. Um, I would say, I'm going to, I'm going to say exactly 2009 is when that case is from. 2009? No, I think it's old. Nope. 2009. That's a budget case from 2009. Cost you about forty bucks, and it came with a four hundred fifty watt power supply. I do remember it was super cheap because I remember seeing them at Fry's. It was about forty all bucks, place, and it comes with about cheap. a four hundred watt power supply. Yeah. Survey says has a Raid Max PSU. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it has a sticker for Windows XP. 
Interesting. So it was an OEM yeah. used that case. Okay. No, because I, I saw those cases from different manufacturers, but they looked exactly the same. So I think um, it was OEM, yeah. Uh, so yeah, if it's a Windows XP case, so yeah, it would, it would be closer to about 2005. That was my original guess. Um, and yeah, the OEMs would be making that, and then they'd probably sell a third party later on. Mm -hmm. um, but they were, they, I mean, they yeah, I, I a long time. But yeah, I guarantee Raid Max was the OEM for that case. Yeah, Raid Max was probably. Everyone in chat going, what the hell is he talking about? I know, about? <laughs> this is Discord chat. Discord. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Good morning. Morning, Styles Gaming. Uh, are SSD prices normalizing or continuing to fall lower? They're continuing to fall as They're RAM prices fall. can still yeah. fall. Maybe 3 to 5% per month, and that's yeah. pretty normal. Um, really, China has to do something against the the, the NAND flash manufacturers mm -hmm. for prices to lower. They're slowly starting to regulate themselves, but they're still just raking in profit left and right. Um, they have not normalized yet. Yeah, DDR4 is still when you can expensive. get 32 gigs of memory for 150 dollars, prices that, of memory yeah. have normalized. Yeah. Have memorized. Memorized. <laughs> yep. So. Yeah, when uh, when you get 32 gigs for 150 bucks, we're back where we should have been. Yeah, three years ago. Yeah, yeah, because I remember a couple years ago, RAM was just I it was affordable. I mean, right. Get, was, uh, three years ago, I rebuilt myself or I built myself an X99 desktop with eight uh, four gigabyte DIMMs of DDR4 2400. <laughs> um, that RAM cost me 135 dollars. Yeah. They're coming on your your fidgeting of the. the I know I'm <laughs> fidgeting like crazy tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting ready for the next he's, drink. He's he's jonesing for some heroin. <laughs> he's got to shoot up. Is this show almost over, Steve? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it'll be it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll be done in a second. Oh. Yeah. Uh, playing with that line was giving me a great idea. Trump should play with a fidget spinner <laughs> next time he talks to the media. <laughs> We're not getting political on this show. Yeah. I repeated the joke. That's as far as we're going. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's 10, 12. I think yeah. that's a good show. That's a good, yeah, it's a good cutting off that's point. It's a good show. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Episode 54 of Talking oh, yeah. Heads. It has been a fun one. It's a, it's been a weird news week because it was both, there's a lot of information there. But at the same time, it's kind of a slow news week. Yeah, it wasn't like anything super exciting. But like it's like RTX 2070 and AMD yeah. might be doing something. And they also released yeah. the graphics card that they already had. And yeah, that, that, in, yeah. Intel, re one guy retired and people are happy, but they still suck. And <laughs> everyone's still questioning why RTX exists for this price point. Yeah. And hey, Vega's making moves, but we kind of knew Vega would kind of make moves once prices normalize and the crypto miners are done with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it was an interesting week, but uh, I think it made for a good show. Well, next week, we'll see what happens. That's right. I'll be back. You'll be back. I'll be back. Oh, God. I don't know if my liver can handle you again. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. Follow Steve on whatever the heck Steve's on this week. Yeah, uh, I don't know. You have to find me. That's the that's the that's the challenge. Yep. You have to uh, find me on Twitter. So I I I like not having a Twitter handle for you because I put something funny down in the video description every week. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll make a secondary Twitter. No. Okay. I'll keep it a mystery. <laughs> keep it a mystery. I'll keep it a mystery. Keep it a mystery. If you're on the Discord, you can find me on Steam pretty easily. But that's, that's right. About it. Yep. And, and join the Discord. Uh, for uh, uh, Look down at the video description for a link to my Patreon. Minimum donation of $1 gets you onto the Discord server. You can chat with myself, Steve, John, Rhett, and uh, a crew of almost 80 people strong oh, that yeah. we have over there. Oh, yeah. And, we daily have good conversations. On good it. conversations. Uh, find out about Steve's alternate Pornhub channel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and what were we you into? You know how big my tentacle hentai porn collection is? That's right. Yeah. And what were we into today? I forget what the conversation was today. Oh, oh today, today was me posting a bunch of GIFs. Oh, that's right. We, that's we right. occasionally have uh, GIF wars. Uh, uh, yeah. What did you say? I said GIF. Oh, you son of a bitch. No, it's GIF, not GIF. It's not a peanut Next butter. week will be a solo show. <laughs> it's not a peanut butter. <laughs> You're, you were a computer guy in the 90s. You I should know. know it's I, GIF. I know what it was, but 
the the popular colloquialism no. now is GIF. No, yes. I think it's still split 50 uh, Even the creator said th- it was GIF. Yeah, he did. Everybody, yes, I know, and I, I, and I understand that, but it doesn't matter. It's it's taken over. No, because yeah. I, I hear GIF just as often as I hear GIF, no, and I GIF is what GIF. it was when it was Dancing Baby. That's what I stand by. <laughs> the original so. viral GIF was Dancing Baby. I know Dancing Baby was pretty big, but I don't think it was the original viral one. The one that was on every it single was on person's everything. computer. Yes, I know. I Everyone's know. computer and every GeoCities I, page. I, <laughs> the Spinning Skull was on every single yeah. GeoCities page. <laughs> yeah. Or the Under Construction. Ooh, so under again, construction? if you can give me a more iconic GIF out of the 90s than Dancing Baby, that came with the name GIF, I'll give you that argument. Well, and they always said .gif. Right. But people always pronounced it GIF. No. They, yes, they did. In the 90s, everyone said GIF. Everyone, everyone that, that I, I knew, knew said GIF. Said it was GIF. Everyone <laughs> I knew said GIF. Oh, well. <laughs> We're not going to solve this here. Yeah. This, this is a battle that's eons yeah. old. Yeah. We're not going to solve this yeah. here. Uh, let's see. All I know is Will Wheaton says GIF, and that's who I'm siding with. Will Wheaton says GIF. Will Wheaton huh? says GIF. I don't know. Wesley's not very smart. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> Yeah, G is for graphics. G- graphics GIF. And and you'd know that uh, uh, acronyms have no pronunciation rules within the English language. Yeah, but they should. It, no, they have no pronunciation rules. Yeah. So that argument holds no water. The 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 argument that holds water is the colloquial term for the phrase. That's yeah, the argument that then, holds water but then for when an someone, acronym. But then when someone says GIF, they ima- it immediately think it's a J. He's no, like, oh, go no. find that find that, that GIF extension. This was some really good gin you brought today, I Steve. know, but gin starts with, starts G, with a G. G. Yeah, that's G. Right, yeah. GIF, gin. <laughs> that's exactly right. You just <laughs> argued my point for me. Well, yeah, it starts with a G. Obviously, it's GIF oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, right. do you remember my favorite uh, uh, cartoon character, Jeffrey the Giraffe? Jeffrey the Giraffe, yeah, okay. But Jeffrey the Giraffe starts with a J. No, G-E-O-F-F-E-R-E-Y. Oh, G- okay. The, Jeffrey the, Ger- the Giraffe. The German spelling, yes. Yeah, yeah. it was Jeffrey the Giraffe but from they, Toys they, R Us coming back. Yeah. yeah. Coming, is, are they going to bring Jeffrey back too with it? I, he's, it? It's got a giraffe on the, on the, the logo okay. that's been priming around. I guess. Toy box or whatever the hell they're calling it now. <laughs> Anyway, we can ramble on for hours. Uh, we probably will for the next hour. Yeah. <laughs> Off air. Maybe we'll leave this going on Twitch. We're going to have more <laughs> gin? <laughs> Our gin? More, more. Have we're some gonna, more gin. We're having more gin. More gin. Gin. Yeah. Okay. Have a nice evening, everyone. Good night. Or a nice morning in the UK.